$50 million in aid to them and also fined them $80 million for recent criticism of the Israeli government. Officials said that the aid was established under the Oslo Accords on condition that the Palestinian Authority use it to fight terrorism and said recent violence in the occupied territories made the U.S. doubt that they were sincere about the pursuit of peace with the Israelis. Representative Ed Royce from California said about one-third of the Palestinian Authority's budget comes from foreign aid and that this means donors have considerable leverage. He suggested other nations could follow the U.S. example and cut aid as well. This seems unlikely, however, as many of the other donors, particularly in Europe and the Middle East, are harshly critical of Israel's crackdown on the Palestinians and probably aren't going to be looking to take out the Palestinians. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently remove the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports, the United Auto Workers informed General Motors it will terminate its contract at 11.59 p.m. Sunday, effectively setting a deadline for the first auto workers strike in eight years. The move is seen as a strategic tactic to keep General Motors and the UAW on task in the talks for a new four-year contract. If a strike does happen, it would be the first in the auto industry since 2007. The Detroit-based company said it was working with the UAW to address the issues and remain committed to obtaining an agreement that is good for employees and the business. Any deal hammered out would cover GM's 51,000 union members for GM, similar to one reached with Fiat Chrysler last week. Union members at Fiat Chrysler turned down the first tentative agreement, forcing officials back to the negotiating table for a second deal that provides significant pay increases over the next four years. Are you an advocate for free market money? Do you promote Bitcoin as an alternative in a fiat-centric world? Then you need Spend a Bit in your arsenal, the search engine for things you can buy with Bitcoin. Spend a Bit aggregates millions of products from thousands of Bitcoin-enabled merchants. Keep your money in the free economy. Visit spendabit.co today. Bitcoin merchants ask about our merchant suite to reach even more customers. Spendabit.co. Reuters reports torrential rainstorms battered Louisiana on Sunday, leaving thousands without power after pounding southeastern Texas as the remnants of Hurricane Patricia converged with a second storm. The heaviest band of rain moved over the Gulf of Mexico, triggering coastal flooding warnings and flash flood watches in southwest Louisiana and soaking New Orleans, according to the National Weather Service. More than 20,000 people were without power in the greater New Orleans area. Rainfall had totaled as much as 7 inches since late Saturday night and forecasters predicted another five inches could fall. The National Weather Service said water spouts over lakes and tornadoes over land were both possible into the early morning hours. National Weather Service forecaster Gavin Phillips said most of the heavier rain to the west of New Orleans will taper off in the evening and for far eastern Louisiana it will probably end closer to midnight. The National Weather Service also issued a tornado watch for southeastern Louisiana and coastal Mississippi into early Monday and warned that severe thunderstorms could develop in the region. Tides along the southern coast of Louisiana were expected to be a few feet above normal at high tide due to sustained winds. More than nine inches of rain swelled rivers and flooded roads around Houston, but no injuries or death were reported as flash flood warnings ended. Petroleum refineries around the Gulf Coast, which make up more than 40% of U.S. capacity, also appeared to be largely undamaged. In the Eagle Ford and Permian Basin oil fields of south and west Texas, no major production cuts were reported, while the rains were heavy in Houston, they came after a month-long dry spell, so flooding was relatively limited. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Shortly after accidentally clicking like on nearly 400 of his ex-girlfriend's Facebook photos earlier today, panicked area man Adam Nunsing spoke to Onion reporters about his mistake. Damn it, I, I was just looking at one of Rebecca's Instagram photos that showed up on my newsfeed, and the next thing I know, I just liked every single photo that she posted over the last four years. I, I didn't mean to, but it just 
kind of happened. The 28-year-old told reporters that he had browsed through 14 of his ex-girlfriend's photo albums while inadvertently clicking like on each and every picture, including dozens from her office picnic last fall, her trip to New York in 2010, and a photo of her and her first boyfriend from 2006. I thought if I went back and clicked unlike on all those pictures that maybe she wouldn't get any notifications, but then I saw some other albums and I ended up liking 80 more photos and shared them on my wall. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live. Of course, you are invited to join us here. We'll give you the toll-free numbers and our Skype in mere moments. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. And we've got some uh, tech news that is going to be affecting a lot of people. Considering the government's NSA has been spying on a whole lot of Americans, as we learned a couple years ago now, with the Edward Snowden revelations that came out, I think it was the summer of 2013, and the Ed Snowden revelations continue to trickle out over time. He's He's got more where that came from, from what I understand. Uh, and the ACLU apparently filed lawsuits in federal district court over some of the uh, NSA surveillance that has been going on. And apparently that court case has now been booted by said court. Uh, it has been dismissed. Here's a story from RT.com where a federal district court judge has dismissed a lawsuit filed by the ACLU that challenged the National Security Agency's mass interception and surveillance of Americans' communications. Citing, which wasn't it supposed to be like illegal for them to do that and they were yep, kind of doing was illegal. it without permission? Siding with the government, the judge ruled Friday that the nine plaintiffs in the case had not plausibly alleged that their communications were being monitored by the NSA. I knew it was going to be about standing. Yeah, yeah. that's what it's all about. Um, you know, like they can, we can, we can prove and prove and prove till the cows come home that uh, the government is looking at our emails and listening to our phone conversations right, with their own documents, as released by Ed Snowden. But you don't have standing. Because you can't prove that you're, you're being spied on uh, emails and stuff. The, the government is so good at hiding this stuff that only leaked documents uh, can prove it. But you can't use those leaked documents because they were supposed to be secret. It's just <laughs> it's it's this insane legal world where they just the words don't mean what they're supposed to mean. Uh, T. S. Ellis is the U.S. District Judge in this case. He wrote in his ruling quote. Plaintiff's standing argument boils down to suppositions about how upstream surveillance must operate in order to achieve the government's stated goals. In a case like this, plaintiffs necessarily rely on probabilities and speculation, because most facts about upstream surveillance remain classified, and hence, plaintiffs see through a glass darkly, unquote. The plaintiffs, which yeah, I wish that uh, if an automobile accident, the uh, the judge would uh, throw things out for me when uh, when this is. Hey, look, I know it's my car, and I know the person driving it looked like me, but isn't the plaintiff really just guessing? I mean, do they really know that it was me that was driving the car? Because they didn't, they don't do that. I had a speeding ticket. I asked the police officer if he remembered the incident. He said. Nope. Well, he said yes. I checked my notes. Yeah, he said he, he remembered clearly the oh, incident. Oh, really? And I asked him, what well, color is my car? And he couldn't answer that question. Must not have been that clear. Right. So he couldn't remember the incident at all. So case dismissed. Uh, no, no. Not at all. No. Uh-uh. Hmm. Why not? Because because that's it, right? Like, they <laughs> they rule in favor of themselves. The judge here, the unpartial, uh, impartial uh, judiciary branch is the government. The government is... Partial as it could possibly be towards itself. The plaintiffs, which included Amnesty International, Wikimedia Foundation, Penn American Center, and the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, among others, argued the NSA's use of so called upstream surveillance enabled the government to collect communications as they transit the Internet backbone. This has allowed the government to copy and review text based communications such as emails, search engine queries, and web pages as well as engage in about surveillance, allowing the agency to search communications that are about its targets. The complaint cited two cases where clients of the NACDL, that's the Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, 
had been prosecuted based on Section 72, uh, 702 of the FISA Amendments Act, which has been used by the NSA to justify its mass collection of data from the infrastructure of communications companies. The plaintiffs also argued that knowing about government surveillance created an undue burden on the organization since they had to minimize the risk of surveillance by limiting the sharing of sensitive information. In response to that, Judge Ellis wrote, quote, The subjective fears of third parties and any alleged burdensome measure taken as a result of subjective fear of surveillance are not fairly traceable to upstream surveillance and therefore do not establish standing. Mm. So if you don't have standing, you can't have a lawsuit. It's true. And uh, kicking a case out because of standing is the most common way that the ju- uh, the justice system, so-called, can just boot your case right out of court. They do it all the time. Uh, the ACLU said that all nine of the plaintiffs in the suit alleged— I know you're a citizen and I know your government's spying on you, but you, know, you just don't have standing. Sorry, you just don't have standing. Uh, they say that all nine of the plaintiffs allege the NSA used upstream surveillance to copy their communications and search them for potentially terrorist-related foreign exchange intelligence information, or foreign intelligence information, rather, and this violated the First and Fourth Amendments of the Constitution and exceeded the government's authority under Section 702. Patrick Toomey of the ACLU said in the case, quote, the court has wrongly insulated the NSA spying from meaningful judicial scrutiny. The decision uh, decision turns a blind eye to the fact that the government is tapping the Internet to spy on millions of Americans. It's it's absolutely a blind eye to that. The dismissal is at odds with an overwhelming public record of warrantless surveillance, unquote. The judge said the method of surveillance under upstream uh, constitutes 9% of total Internet communications acquired by the NSA under Section 702. He noted that under the agency's PRISM program, it gathered more than 250 million communications a year as of 2011. And then in 2014, the government targeted the communications of more than 92,000 individuals, groups, and organizations under a single foreign intelligence surveillance court order. So is that the way a warrant is supposed to work, where you can just get one court order and then gather information about 92,000 individuals, groups, and organizations? Pretty impressive. I don't think that was the original intention of, uh, of a warrant. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. Uh, you know, Warrants are supposed to specify what it is that they're looking for in the, very specific places. Particular, I believe, is the term they yeah. use. Uh, this is Ashley Gorski, the staff attorney at the ACLU. We particularly state that we can search everything. Signed the government. ACLU staff attorney said this, the NSA's mass surveillance violates our clients' constitutional rights to privacy, freedom of speech, and freedom of association, and poses a grave threat to a free internet and a free society. The private communications of innocent people don't belong in government hands. And the government judge said, well, for now it does. Mm -hmm. Dismissed. And maybe they'll appeal the case. Tough cookies. Yeah, presumably they'll appeal the dismissal. It doesn't say here in the... Uh, the RT story, but yeah, that doesn't look good. Uh, doesn't look good, does it? It doesn't the, look good at all. The future looks, of privacy on the internet. It looks like, um, I mean, Americans basically accepted that the government was spying on them before the Edward Snowden uh, revelations came out. I think that did they. Be, I think they did. I think that it's uh, that most people just believe that. Yep, the government looks at whatever they feel like, whenever they feel like it, and it's okay. And I think that they just, you know, like, whoa, now we know for sure they're doing it. And now it's just going to become the new normal. The new normal is the government looks at anything it wants to look at and draws whatever conclusions it wants to draw. I, I think it bears repeating. I've said it many times. I'm not that concerned with the government looking at my stuff. So that's where it comes from then, right? Well, I'm I mean, just not con- if you as a liberty-oriented talk show host are not that concerned – then certainly the average American is less concerned. No, right? no, no. I, let me allow me to make my point. All right. My concern isn't based on them looking at my stuff. Yes, at the odd time, every once in a while, you'll find somebody out there amongst the millions that gets picked up for something they didn't do just because of what they were looking at on the internet. It's rare, but it happens. Um, but what I'm concerned with is the NSA looking at judges, uh, captains of industry, politicians' emails, finding out. Where their skeletons are, and then people in the government using this information to subvert democracy, right? Like democracy may not be the best form of a uh, government out there. It's not even remotely close to the best form of government, in my my opinion. But at the very least, 
it doesn't it isn't corrupt in the same ways and this is you're going to have a sort of a a, a dark set of rulers once it becomes corrupt when these politicians and these bureaucrats. What makes you think that, uh, this seems like all a little Pollyanna-ish? I mean, you don't think you already have a dark set of rulers as is that these people aren't a bunch of scumbags? These politicians. I mean, the idea that you're more concerned about the privacy of these politicians than your own, I think, is kind of concerning. They're competing scumbags. Scumbags competing against each other for their own, um, you know, their own best interests. Whereas once they become uh, blackmailed, then you have the scumbags controlling the scumbags, and there's one goal. And once you have one goal, then they're going to get much faster at getting to it. Eight fifty-five, four fifty, free. That's our number. It's Free Talk Live. The vet had them on antibiotics as well as steroids. Nothing worked. The vet had given him a cortisone. The vet prescribed an antihistamine. The vet thought that Molly was just old. Probably three to four hundred dollars every four months. At least five thousand dollars in vet bills. All total, twenty-seven hundred dollars in doggy fees, and all it took was one container of Dynavite. D i n o v i t e dot com. Eight five nine four two eight one thousand. The omega three fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive of enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. The ingredients are what the veterinarian said he was lacking. Within two days, his scratching, it seemed to go away. After five weeks, her fur is beautiful. She is totally happy. Molly's gotten this puppy look. Her coat has sheen. Oh, yes. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. My vet was completely blown away. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. My name is Bill Bonner, and I'm the president of the largest private news and research network in the world. And I paid for this airtime because I have an important message to the American people. There's a change coming that the government isn't telling you about. This change has deep implications for life in America, from where you shop to the doctors you visit and the family you want to protect. Look, I've made predictions like this before. Thing is, I was right then, too. A few years ago, I warned that housing prices would collapse. They did. Before that, I warned that dot-com companies would crash. They did. Those who listened had a chance to save themselves. But this has nothing to do with the stock market. This will affect us all. You can watch the video for free right now by going to disappearingwealth.com. Again, that's disappearingwealth.com. Understanding your credit score is the first step towards managing and improving it. This is Charlie Sundstrom with your Van Dyke Mortgage Minute. The most influential component of your credit score is your payment history. Almost equally as important is the amount you owe on credit accounts. Also impacting your score, but to a lesser degree, are the length of time you've utilized your credit, the number of new accounts, credit inquiries, and your various types of credit accounts. To help achieve or maintain a healthy credit score, have a system set up to assure your bills are always paid on time. Don't max out your cards. It's better to have a high credit limit with a low balance. Never close old accounts. The age of these can actually help your credit score. But don't be afraid to use your credit. You need several accounts in order to have a credit score. Just keep the corresponding payments within your means. For your mortgage pre-approval and refi needs, start by visiting VanDykeMortgage.com. Corporate NMLS 3035. Van Dyke Mortgage is an equal housing lender. Charlie Sundstrom, NMLS 134251. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free, at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Cryptocurrency and peer-to-peer -peer tech developments happen fast. Stay in the loop with The Daily Decrypt, a new video channel and podcast that will keep you informed of the latest in cryptocurrency, software apps, drones, 3D printing, and general technological coolness. Find The Daily Decrypt on YouTube and SoundCloud and be an early adopter of the future. The Daily Decrypt.
While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Join us here on the radio. Our toll-free number for you is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. The lawsuit against the NSA has been thrown out uh, by a federal district court judge basically saying, well, you can't prove the NSA was spying on you, so you don't have any standing. Even though there's all kinds of evidence out there that the NSA is just wholesale spying, uh, spying on countless Americans, because you can't prove that they were spying on you specifically, then you don't have a lawsuit. That's Game what it comes over. down to. Yep. Uh, and so there's that. There, you can comment there. Certainly, maybe you support the NSA spying on people. Would love to hear from you. Our number is 855-450-FREE. So you can't count on the government to not you know, violate their own rules. They've been doing that forever. This is, you know, shouldn't be a surprise that they're spying on people. Uh, you can't you can't count on them to protect your privacy. You've got to protect your own privacy. And there are tools that you can use to do that. Pro XPN is an excellent choice. Uh, this allows you to have a virtual private network that encrypts your online data before it reaches your ISP. Your ISP might be selling that information, you know, data mining it for themselves, maybe even turning it over to the government. And you can stop that from happening by encrypting your data. Go through pro, uh, proxpn.com slash amp. This is a special offer for those of you with Bitcoin. Uh, proxpn.com slash amp gets you two years of ProXPN for less than $50 worth of Bitcoin and $5 of your purchase will go to the AMP program to help Free Talk Live spread the ideas of liberty. So they're actually going to AMP Free Talk Live to help us advertise, market, and promote this show to spread the ideas of freedom because over at ProXPN, they're down with that. They like that. You go to ProXPN.com slash AMP and then spend Bitcoin and you'll get that awesome deal. So again, it's ProXPN.com slash AMP. By the way, ProXPN does not keep logs of any of your activities whatsoever. ProXPN.com slash AMP as we go to more privacy-related news. This from Engadget.com. The Department of Justice is trying to get Apple to unlock a defendant's iPhone. While Apple has stated it can technically bypass the phone's passcode security, it has so far refused to do so for various reasons. So the Department of Justice has come up with a new strategy to force Apple to comply because it licenses the software on the phone. Because of that, the Department of Justice contends that the iPhone maker actually has a relationship with the phone that's currently evidence in a case. In a reply to Apple's response to the court order to unlock the phone, the government states, quote, Apple cannot reap the legal benefits of licensing its software in this manner and then later disclaim any ownership or obligation to assist law enforcement when that same software plays a critical role in thwarting execution of a search warrant. In other words, it's your software, Apple, not the defendant's, so unlock it. It's true. I mean, isn't it? Well, yeah. When according, you... according to their laws that you buy a phone, you buy the phone, but uh, Apple still owns the, the software. And so therefore, if, if they've got a subpoena or something like that, they can say, open it. Yeah, that's kind of disturbing. Um, now... It this makes is one of the wonder. problems of copyright, people. <laughs> yeah, and and you know this is the uh, the terms of service, the terms of agreement that you click accept whenever you install, uh, you know, any kind of software product, Windows, Apple, whatever. Uh, that long terms that no one ever actually reads. Right. There's probably some sort of term in there that says that you'll obey all the government ordinances or whatever, and so you know, be a good little boy with this software. Uh, but I guess the idea here is that in the first place, uh, it's Apple's software, so the government gets to you know motion the court to force Apple to unlock this, and Apple's saying they can do that, so that's disturbing, which sounds like there is some sort of a backdoor 
uh, to, to this to this software. Well, of course, they put in <laughs> some kind of back door for themselves, but the question is, is, will they turn it over to the government? It's long been said that Apple is the more secure of the two, um, if you're comparing Apple to Android. Is that right? Yeah. I hadn't heard that. Um, but you can get sort of mods and things for your Android phone to make it more secure, as I understand it. Huh. And I would assume you could root the Apple phone, too. I mean, I don't know that much about these things, but... Uh, the Apple, it's called jailbreaking the phone, mm -hmm. and I don't know exactly what that does. I don't know exactly how different it is from rooting it, which is something that you can do with the Android. Now, on the Android... Uh, when you root the phone, you can then install different operating systems on it. And so I wonder if the phone has been rooted and there's a new operating system, one of these independent homebrews, if you will, uh, would the same rules apply then? Would they be able to force the, uh, the homebrew maker who's not licensing their software, it's free, uh, to uh, to force them to let the government into a homebrew phone. If They'd you will. try, but at that point, it's see. In this case, it's worth going after Apple because there are millions of Apple phones yeah. out there. Whereas if it's you know some but how many people have this particular homebrewed uh, operating system? Probably no more than a few thousand, hundreds, thousands of yeah. them. So if they find one person with it, then they have to go hunt down the person who had made it. And this isn't CSI, right? They're going to give up. So if it's unlicensed, though, if it's freeware, if you will, if it's uh, the kind of software that is open source, mm -hmm. then essentially the government's argument would not hold water. So therefore, if Windows and Apple were to move to an open source version of their operating system, then they wouldn't be able to be forced by the government to unlock the phone because they'd be giving away the operating systems, no longer licensing it. That's correct. Of course, but they're not going to do, do that. that. No, they're not going to do that. They'd rather give up your security. Um, they'd rather give that up than give out their software. So the government strategy is in re is a reaction to Apple's refusal to comply with a court order to unlock an iPhone 5S. In response to the order, Apple's lawyer stated, quote, forcing Apple to extract data in this case, absent clear legal authority to do so, could threaten the trust between Apple and its customers and substantially tarnish the Apple brand. It also noted that unlocking the phone would eat up resources and might not even yield any information. Plus, just for good measure, it would be impossible to circumvent the passcode of any phone running iOS 8 and later. The phone in question is running iOS 7. So maybe the iOS 8 was the one where the the proper encryption was put in. Mm. It sounds like they're just trying to get a, get past a password screen or something like that. Sounds like I it. did remember the story not long ago was that Apple and then uh, Google followed suit. Apple put out this new operating system version that shipped with encryption. So your phone, basically, when you turned it on, you set a password and you're encrypted. That was my understanding of yeah. that. And that was there was news stories about how the Department of Justice was really upset about that when they, they got the news about it. And then, again, Android followed suit. Uh, so it says here that it could substantially tarnish the Apple brand. You know, I, happen, I have to wonder if the Department of Justice sends an order to Apple. Let's say this judge uh, writes an order and he says, Apple... You must unlock this man's phone. Well, what happens if the employees at Apple say, not my job, not my job? Whose responsibility is it ultimately? Are they going to put who do they put in prison for violating a court order when the order is written toward a corporation? Does the board of directors go to prison? Does the executive uh, director, the CEO go to prison? Do the stockholders risk going to prison? What happens in that case? I don't know, but I would guess that um, you know no corporation wants you know they're, they're about making money. They're going to do what they're told. Yeah. But they're 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 about making money, so therefore, if the government really you know decides Apple is public enemy number one, they're going to take them down. Our toll-free number here, 855-453. Some ash. Because cigarettes have met their match. Smokers are switching to Vapriot e-liquid by La Cig. Because when you kick ash, you kick tar and smelly smoke, too. La Cig smokes the competition with real people customer service, a seven-day satisfaction guarantee, and same-day fast free shipping. Become a vapor today at LaCig.com. Spelled L-E-C-I-G.com. La Cig e-cigarettes. Kick some ash. My name's Clyde, age 59, and I reside in Florence, South Carolina. The doctors diagnosed me as having clogged arteries. Felt like I was carrying heavy concrete blocks around my feet and legs. I started taking heart and body extract as directed. 
It is less than three weeks and I'm like a young man again. It's unbelievable that an herbal formula can work so fast and so powerfully. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Silvia rated an A-plus by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hello Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more speaker announcements, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. This is your Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Monday, gold is up $3 at $1,168 per ounce, and silver is up $0.10 cents at $15.97 per ounce. Bitcoin is currently trading at $284. US Roberts & Roberts Brokerage, founded in 1977. When you're serious about precious metals, give us a call at 800-874-9760 or visit us online at rrbi.co. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. An hour spent volunteering at a local homeless shelter truly make her death at the hands of a drunk driver earlier this week. All the harder to take for this school and this community. I never knew Amanda, but everywhere I went there were touching reminders of the caring friend she would have been to me had I known her. Losing Amanda was one of the hardest things I've ever had to deal with, but I knew I had to be strong for this community. I couldn't let them go through the funeral without my support. <laughs> She's so much better than all of us. She was so much good. She cared about so many people. <laughs> she loved you so much. What's your name? She loved me, Russell. And we have O'Brady Shaw with us right now. Thanks, Brooke. Not quite how I would have reported the story. Seems a bit unprofessional to let yourself get so emotional. Well, when people are feeling pain, I feel it too. Don't you ever get emotionally invested in a story? No, I don't. You know, I had my tear ducts cauterized years ago, and I like to keep my emotions stored in a special place in my mind where they only come out for my night terrors. This is the Onion News Network. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, of course. You can join us right here. The toll-free number for you, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Our friends uh, from copblock.org, the Mac Tour, are actually in Noblesville, Indiana right now, and they are preparing to chalk the police station again before ultimately <laughs> being arrested for chalking the police station. And uh, we're going to continue. We'll tell you a little bit more about that when we get a moment. Also, you can join us here, and you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Coming up, Mark, you're going to Vegas, and you're going real soon. Like, you're going to be there Thursday. Yeah, we're we're getting ready. It's, for the uh, Bitcoin Investor Conference. It's the first ever Free Talk Live broadcast from, live broadcast from Las Vegas, and we are excited to be there from the Bitcoin Investor Conference. October 29th, that's Thursday, and 30th, that's Friday. Please come hang out with us. It's going to be a great time. There's great speakers. They're going to be talking about how you can make more money in the sphere of uh, Bitcoin, new developments in, in the area of Bitcoin. 
There's going to be, uh, you know, things for no uh, noobs to figure out what uh, Bitcoin's all about. It's going to be a, a, a great event and Free Talk Live's broadcasting live from the event. We're going to have some uh, past co-hosts on with us. Uh, Brian Sovereign, Stephanie Murphy, uh, Michelle Seven. It's going to be a great event. As I said, just go to BitcoinInvestor.com. That's BitcoinInvestor.com. Get your tickets. They're low, low price of $100 for both days. BitcoinInvestor.com. We'll talk more about your uh, phone privacy here as well. Uh, let's go to TJ on the line in Missouri via Skype. Hello, TJ. Hey, Ian. How's my audio? You sounding good. Go ahead, sir. All right. You wanted to know what happens if Apple disobeys a court order, and I can answer that. The traditional judicial remedy, if a court finds that a company must do something and they refuse to do it, is a fine. So a judge could order Apple fine $10 million a day for every day they refuse to comply. Oh, wow. But this, yeah. And so that's the, generally they all will comply. But this actually, this case is fairly interesting because it centers around what burden a company has to help the police. So imagine, you know, I like to use the analogy, if you have like a safe and inside the safe is a bunch of stolen candy bars and the police have a search warrant to search the safe for said candy bars. Mm -hmm. If it's protected by a combination, the government cannot compel you to reveal that combination because of the Fifth Amendment. However, if the safe is protected with a key, the government can compel you to turn over the key to unlock the safe. Now, the question is, what about the safe manufacturer? If the safe manufacturer has built a back door in the safe, and the only problem is it takes a million dollars worth of effort to open it. Yeah. And, it, you, know, you know, so this court case, the reason it's so important is Apple is saying, look, we might be able to break open our phone, but it would be too onerous and too difficult for us to do. And if the government's not going to pay for the effort, we shouldn't be forced to pay out of our own pocket to break something that may or may not even produce usable evidence. And that's the question the court is trying to resolve. Under what circumstances is a company required to cooperate in breaking into their own safe? And this is a it's a very good question because the government's all about trying to force you to do things and not paying you to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, think about this as far as income taxes go. They force every American out there who's uh, working to fill out their income tax forms for them. And this can take a, a great deal of time. Uh, I mean, my wife spent as much as 60 hours in a year doing taxes. That's more than a week's worth of work that she did. And the government didn't write her a check, didn't write the company a check, didn't write anybody a check because it just says you are a serf, you are a bookkeeping serf who will do our work for us for free or will throw you in prison. But I thought filing taxes was voluntary. I think Harry Reid said as much on television. Well, yeah, <laughs> it is voluntary. She must. It must have been voluntary. She did it, right? Taxes, taxes are voluntary. And then the guy kept pressing him. Well, you know, they're voluntary. You mean I don't have to pay my taxes? Well, no, you got to pay your taxes, but it's voluntary. It's ridiculous. And it's just this, yeah, I mean, it was a beautiful little interview. So I just wanted to clarify that, and I'll let the next caller take the take the air. All right, uh, TJ, thanks for the call tonight. And I know that uh, that he's been following what's been going on with the demo Freeman and Brian Sumner from copblock.org slash Mac. Uh, latest update I've seen from Jordan uh, on Facebook, Jordan Freshour, is that they are in Noblesville, Indiana, which is the place they were. Actually, there was a warrant issued for their arrests for chalking the Noblesville Police Department with what's called liquid chalk that they'd purchased at Walmart. Well, you don't know that that's the case. I mean, the, the warrant isn't clear as to why they came that's after That's true. Them. We're presuming that that's, that's the That's the, the thing that changed. Yeah. But um, it's not like they had chalked the Noblesville Police Department a great deal of times. So that's there's true. some. So there are some factors that have changed, like, i.e., chalking the Noblesville Police Department. Um, so we don't know. Well, you know, maybe they would have done this even if they had used just regular chalk. We don't know the answer. That's true. We don't know. Uh, and so they've purchased more liquid chalk and have now gone to Noblesville, Indiana, and are now, I guess, on uh, en route to the police department where they will resume chalking. And they presume that at some point the police will come out and arrest them, given that there have been warrants issued for them in that department. So uh, we'll uh, let you know more as that situation develop, uh, develops. More here from Engadget, a little bit more on the Apple case where the government is attempting to, uh, the Department of Justice specifically, is attempting to force Apple to break into one of their customers' phones that's running iOS 7 uh, to s circumvent the passcode. Apparently, if you have iOS 8 and later, then not even Apple can circumvent the security on their own phone. 
So make sure you upgrade that phone. If you're concerned about privacy, uh, if you've got an Apple phone, then if you can upgrade past iOS 8, it sounds like you'll, you'll want to do that and, and enable the encryption on your phone just to be safe. Now, as expected, the government isn't too happy about not having access to the phones of defendants. Apple's CEO Tim Cook has been on a privacy crusade recently. He recently said that people have a fundamental right to privacy. And Cook has also insisted the government does not have a backdoor into Apple's servers. As Boing Boing points out, if the government succeeds with their argument, it opens up a terrifying precedent. Nearly every piece of technology has software that is licensed and not sold to the end user. All of those companies could be compelled to unlock, decrypt, and allow the authorities access to these devices because it doesn't belong to the defendant. It belongs to the person that owns the software. So even though you own the phone, even though it's your phone, you've paid for it, the software on there, that licensing agreement that you click the accept button on every time you install something, that basically says, hey, we're giving you this software on a temporary basis. You can have the software so long as you comply with all of our, you know, agreements here. And if we decide to change the software or change the rules, well, you just have to live with that because it's not your software. It's ours and we'll do what we want with it. Well, now the government's trying to say, well, because of that licensing agreement, we'll do what we want to you companies. And then you'll do our bidding when we come and ask you to jump when we say jump. The, um, the the good news here is is that the new operating system that Apple has out has is encrypted and it has a passcode and the government cannot compel you That's as right. I understand it unless perhaps you are at a border crossing um, but cannot generally compel you to turn over your passcode in that way so at the very least this is uh, it's it's good news that this is just kind of an old problem. Yeah, well, hopefully this uh, guy with the old iPhone is going to be okay, but it's not looking too promising here, especially with the other court decision kicking out the lawsuit against the NSA. So really, the big question is, how do you protect yourself? Because you can't expect uh, the mega corporations to do it, even though Apple's supposedly all about privacy nope, now. Nope, they're not going to do that for you. Uh, you know, They're only going to spend so much money defending this, and eventually they'll crumble and do what they're told. So what can you do about it? Well, ProXPN is a good start. That's a good way to protect your communications uh, from your own internet service provider knowing about it. Uh, but you'll also want to learn PGP, I think. PGP is a pretty important uh, set of it's pretty good. software that is sort of like the renowned world accepted method of encrypting communications on the internet. And it can be a kind of a process to, you know, kind of grasp what PGP is all about. Uh, I recommend there are some... You know, if you if you do like a beginner's guide to PGP, it'll give you a good explanation for kind of what's going on with it. And then there's uh, there's plugins like CryptoKit and Mailvelope that make using PGP easier. That's true. Uh, so there are ways to do PGP that's fairly simple, and that's a great way to protect mission critical communications, important business communications, or whatever it is that you need to protect. Eight fifty five four fifty free. What are your recommendations for security? It's Free Talk Live. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. You can control your health care with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is like-minded people coming together to share medical costs, which saves money. You don't even have to pay for procedures that violate your conscience. Because we all share the same values. Join the movement of people who share in medical costs and change the way you pay for your health care forever. Go to libertyhealthshare.org to find out more. Liberty HealthShare. Together, we're changing health care for good. libertyhealthshare.org. My name is Dell, and I live in El Cajon, California. I was concerned about my cholesterol readings because I knew that high cholesterol is related to clogging of the arteries and increases the risk for heart attack and stroke. One day, I heard an ad for heart and body extract, and I was skeptical, but I decided to give it a try. Man, the numbers don't lie. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. 
There are hundreds of silver products on the market today, but there's nothing like the astonishing health benefits of the multi-patented One Silver Solution. Boost your immune system at a great price with our Silver Solution Liquid, starting at $12.95 a bottle, now available in regular and extra strength. That's half the price of the leading competitors. Call 844-USE-SILVER for your free catalog or go to OneSilverSolution.com. OneSilverSolution.com. There is only one Silver Solution. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeen.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at FreeKeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at FreeKeen.com. That's FreeKeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Free speech is protected on the internet, right? Not always. Government agencies try to limit free speech and commerce on the net. Luckily, when they do, the Institute for Justice is there to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. IJ helped set the first federal precedent for internet free speech in 1999, and ever since has worked to prevent unconstitutional roadblocks in cyberspace. Visit our website today at ij.org. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. Join us right here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've also got Skype. You may Skype in here at Skype username lrn.fm. That's what uh, our last caller did, and you can sound pretty darn good on Skype, almost like you're sitting in the studio with us. And the us in the studio is me, Ian. And me, Mark. And uh, since we're talking tech, we were starting out the hour here uh, discussing various privacy-related issues Essentially, you know, continuing the message that you really don't have it. Uh, by default, you don't have privacy, even though there's a supposed right to it in the United States. I guess like a lot of rights, if you don't actually stand up for your rights, if you don't flex your rights, if you don't use your rights, then you'll lose your rights because the government is always encroaching, constantly growing, constantly trying to put its tentacles into every little nook and cranny of your life. And if you don't do something about that then you kind of deserve what you get, unfortunately. I wish it wasn't that way. I wish we could all just sit back and do whatever we want with our lives and not have to worry about people in the government invading our freedoms and destroying them and destroying the, the idea of rights in the first place. But that's just the way it is. You don't get to sit back if you care about freedom. You've got to take action. You've got to uh, get out there. You've got to, get the one, get the word out about freedom and rights because a lot of people don't even know their rights. They have no clue. I've done a lot of cop block outreach. Our friends from Cop Block's Mac Tour tonight are about ready to get arrested uh, in Noblesville, Indiana. We'll let you know more as, as that develops. I've done a lot of this outreach, and uh, it's a lot of it is uh, know your rights outreach because when you're out on the streets and you know there's not an immediate cop call to go to, you can hand out information to people. That's what I've, I've done quite a bit here in Keene, New Hampshire. And usually people are enthusiastic about knowing their rights when you put it in their face. So I have these warning cards, these cop block warning flyers that go over your basic rights when it comes to the police. 
and uh, you know you can record the police you have a right to say no to a request to search and you know don't talk to the police some good suggestions are on this card and so I'll be down in the college neighborhood, for instance, and I've also gone to large events like there's a music fest here in Keene, and I've handed out uh, the flyers there as well. And it doesn't matter who the audience is. People seem genuinely interested in knowing their rights. I'll you know, say something like, you know, here's some information about your rights with the police, something like that. And uh, people's eyes will light up and they'll, oh, my rights? I need to know about that. And then they'll you know, reach out and they'll take the card from me. Uh, or they'll say some sort of variant of, uh, of that. So so I think people do care a little bit about their rights, but they won't go out of their way to really find out anything about them. Yeah, I would say that's probably the case. And so that's part of our job, I think, as uh, communicators, Mark, as, as talk show hosts, is to express the idea of rights and how to stand up for your rights here on the radio waves so people can hopefully absorb them. And when the time comes... Uh, utilize them because that's the trick you can read the card and you know read over the rules but when the the heat is on when the police are harassing somebody or harassing you remembering the rights and knowing how to exert them is a little tricky yeah i found uh myself even you know, me i talk about these things on a regular basis and i found myself in interactions with police talking more than i probably should me too happens so you know it's practice, 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 and right. um, you can study, and that's what that's about, and then you got to practice, so that's how it goes. So, yeah, important to know your rights, important to protect yourself, uh, protect your privacy from these government goons. They want into everything, so it's up to you, and they're going to get in unless you have the technology that actually stops them from doing so. Now, of course, the big uh, question mark on a lot of this technology is can you really trust it? You know, is this uh, encryption technology you're using actually written by the NSA and has a back door in it? Well, you don't know unless you're a programmer and, uh, you know, you can audit the software. If the software is open source, that's a good sign. So yeah. that's why you pick the stuff that's been around for a while, not something the new flash in the pan that's yeah. out. And PGP has been out for a very long time. That's a good point. Chances are that if it was going to be, you know, uh, used against somebody it would have been used against somebody um you know if the nsa the nsa is going you know wants information because it's going to use it and at some point or another they would have gone after somebody and so i'm reasonably certain pgp is good yeah pgp seems pretty rock solid in fact ed snowden specifically recommended pgp so when you know when he, he was when he yeah. was talking about ways to protect yourself from the nsa pgp was what he suggested. So I'd say that's like the sort of the uh, the gold standard, if you will, of encryption technology. There are some others out there. I like TechSecure uh, for texting communications. That one is also supposedly open source. Uh, Telegram, I am a fan of, but a lot of these things I wouldn't trust for super secret communications. If I were, if I had to send something super super secret, I would send that via PGP. I wouldn't use anything else besides besides PGP. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Telegram's a great instant messaging app. Text Secure is, will su uh, secure your texts. It will encrypt those. And having something's better than having nothing. Uh, certainly, using networks like Facebook is the worst thing you can possibly do because then your all of your texts are just right there in the open for Facebook to read and hand over to the government uh, anytime they darn well feel like it. So whatever you can do to get off these sort of standard messaging systems that don't have any kind of encryption, I would recommend that. Redphone is the same company as TechSecure. Whisper Systems, I believe, is their their name. And uh, Redphone is an, encrypt an encrypted uh, speaking app, meaning that you can uh, talk to another person like a phone call, but the phone call itself is encrypted. Do they have another? Do they have to have the red phone app too? Yes, the yes, other so. person has to have the red phone app as well. Mm. Same thing with tech security. It's like, that's basically a VPN for phones. Yeah, I guess you could look at it that way. I don't know if it's well. I wouldn't say exactly that, but yeah, it's sort of a layer of security that you otherwise wouldn't have on a on a phone call. Uh, so those are some basics. That's a good. I, th I would say it's a good starting point for you. If you've got some suggestions, I'm sure I'm missing something. I, I by all by no means was that an exhaustive list of good uh, technology to encrypt things. But uh, again, our toll free number here eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero. 3733. There's other tech-related news that I think is worthy of getting out here, including the uh, story about this awful, awful news 
about uh, the blockchain alliance. We'll get into that. Plus, Popcorn Time has been shut down, at least the most popular Popcorn Time fork. Mark, do you know what Popcorn Time is? It's some way to watch movies on your phone. I, I guess there's probably a phone version of it. I've never actually looked for it on the phone. I, I did look for it on the regular computer, and I the found computer. it there. Okay. Maybe there's a phone version of it. There apparently are different versions of If I of can't this. watch it on my big screen TV at my house, yeah. you know, the I just don't want it, whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, I've never understood why someone would want to watch a movie on a phone. That seems like a terrible way People to. People do it. Yeah. But I remember when I was a kid, um, I would drag around the portable television set with the rabbit ears. Oh, yeah. Um, that ran on uh, D batteries. And, how long would that last on the batteries? I don't really remember. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, but it, uh, I, and I'd watch TV, you know, I'd try to get into my cartoons or whatever it is that I wanted to watch. And, and the reception so, was terrible. Right? It was, well, it was, but it just goes to show yeah. why somebody might want would to do it. watch it on a phone. Yeah, yeah, I see that. They have to see it. They have to see it now, and their phone's the only option. I gotcha. They uh, just get used to it, too. I so mean, Popcorn just- Time is a uh, software that uses the torrent system to stream movies to your device. And it's a cool idea because torrents are a great technology. Torrents are a file sharing technology that allow you to send big files over the internet without using a central server. So it's a decentralized method of sending files or receiving files. You download a torrent and then the torrent gives you the uh, destinations to which you can go and, and find all the people that are hosting that file online. And then those people send that uh, send the data to you, and it's coming from different sources. So it comes faster, usually, by torrent than it would come if you were just downloading it uh, from a ser- central server. And whoever it is that's that's hosting the file, it's probably dozens and dozens, if not thousands, of people around the world. It's in, it's hard to take take that down, right? So like if the Motion Picture Association wants to target the new movie that they've released, you know, Alice in Wonderland or whatever it is, uh, they want to take take that down. Well, there's 3,000 people that are hosting it. Mm-hmm. So how are you going to begin that process? Can't be done. You can't do that. It's very, very difficult. So what they've been doing is taking down the torrent websites like the Pirate Bay or Torrent Freak or these other ones. Uh, they've been targeting the sites because those are sort of central repositories of the torrents themselves. They don't actually host the files. They don't host the actual movie, the music, or whatever it is that's being shared. They host the torrent, which is sort of the directions to the file. If When's the blockchain going to be employed in this way? Because oh my God, I don't you know. can't take down the blockchain. Yeah, you can't. But the thing with uh, Bitcoin uh, is that there are a bunch of little transactions being sent over the Bitcoin blockchain over, you know, throughout the day. There's still plenty of data that's moving about because of that. If people were storing mu- uh, music and movies on the blockchain, that would well, be Well, they may not have to store huge. it. They could uh, serve it to people. Oh, I see what you mean. Isn't that what a tor- like torrent Like put the does? torrent on the blockchain. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's a good idea, Mark. You should, uh, you could do that. I yeah, guess. I could do that. <laughs> I could do that. Anyway, uh, popcorn time is maybe coming to a close here, and we can tell you about that. 855 450 free, 855 450 3733. Plus, there's a scary blockchain alliance being formed. What's that mean? It's Free Talk Live. Currency is too important a thing to be left in the hands of government bureaucrats, especially when billions of dollars can be created with the swipe of a pen. Overstock.com supports the cryptocurrency movement because it returns the power of an inflation-proof form of money to the people where it belongs. Did you know that you can use Bitcoin to pay for anything Overstock.com sells while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more? If you support freedom and the cryptocurrency movement, you should support Overstock.com. Are your kids spending too much time online? Are they gaming instead of doing homework? Are they on Facebook instead of sleeping? Turn their internet access on or off when you want for free at webcurfew.com. 100% web-based interface means nothing to download, install, or configure. Web Curfew is free and controls any device using your home network without slowing down your internet. Block all adult web content with a click of a button. Don't let the internet raise your kids. Take back control of how and when your home internet is used for free free. Visit webcurfew.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website or idea email me mark at freetalklive.com 
You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kane and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, October 26, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.95 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,166 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $285. Antiwar.com reports in weekend moves they said were intended as a message to the Palestinian Authority, the U.S. House of Representatives voted to temporarily freeze $450 million in aid to them and also fined them $80 million for recent criticism of the Israeli government. Officials said that the aid was established under the Oslo Accords on condition that the Palestinian Authority use it to fight terrorism and said recent violence in the occupied territories made the U.S. doubt that they were sincere about the pursuit of peace with the Israelis. Representative Ed Royce from California said about one-third of the Palestinian Authority's budget comes from foreign aid and that this means donors have considerable leverage. He suggested other nations could follow the U.S. example and cut aid as well. This seems unlikely, however, as many of the other donors, particularly in Europe and the Middle East, are harshly critical of Israel's crackdown on the Palestinians and probably aren't going to be looking to take out the Palestinians. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently remove the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports, the United Auto Workers informed General Motors it will terminate its contract at 11.59 p.m. Sunday, effectively setting a deadline for the first auto worker strike in eight years. The move is seen as a strategic tactic to keep General Motors and the UAW on task in the talks for a new four-year contract. If a strike does happen, it would be the first in the auto industry since 2007. The Detroit-based company said it was working with the UAW to address the issues and remain committed to obtaining a an agreement that is good for employees and the business. Any deal hammered out would cover GM's 51,000 union members for GM, similar to one reached with Fiat Chrysler last week. Union members at Fiat Chrysler turned down the first tentative agreement, forcing officials back to the negotiating table for a second deal that provides significant pay increases over the next four years. Are you an advocate for free market money? Do you promote Bitcoin as an alternative in a fiat-centric world? Then you need Spend a Bit in your arsenal. The search engine for things you can buy with Bitcoin. Spend a Bit aggregates millions of products from thousands of Bitcoin-enabled merchants. Keep your money in the free economy. Visit spendabit.co today. Bitcoin merchants ask about our merchant suite to reach even more customers. Spendabit.co. Reuters reports torrential rainstorms battered Louisiana on Sunday, leaving thousands without power after pounding southeastern Texas as the remnants of Hurricane Patricia converged with a second storm. The heaviest band of rain moved over the Gulf of Mexico, triggering coastal flooding warnings and flash flood watches in southwest Louisiana and soaking New Orleans, according to the National Weather Service. More than 20,000 people were without power in the greater New Orleans area. Rainfall had totaled as much as 7 inches since late Saturday night and forecasters predicted another five inches could fall. The National Weather Service said water spouts over lakes and tornadoes over land were both possible into the early morning hours. National Weather Service forecaster Gavin Phillips said most of the heavier rain to the west of New Orleans will taper off in the evening and for far eastern Louisiana it will probably end closer to midnight. The National Weather Service also issued a tornado watch for southeastern Louisiana and coastal Mississippi into early Monday and warned that severe thunderstorms could develop 
develop in the region. Tides along the southern coast of Louisiana were expected to be a few feet above normal at high tide due to sustained winds. More than nine inches of rain swelled rivers and flooded roads around Houston, but no injuries or deaths were reported as flash flood warnings ended. Petroleum refineries around the Gulf Coast, which make up more than 40% of U.S. capacity, also appeared to be largely undamaged. In the Eagle Ford and Permian Basin oil fields of south and west Texas, no major production cuts were reported. While the rains were heavy in Houston, they came after a month-long dry spell, so flooding was relatively limited. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Last night's Victoria's Secret fashion show was a true ratings winner, particularly with men who don't know that actual pornography exists. The angels' feather costumes and silk nightgowns were a hit with 30 to 35-year-old male viewers who had no idea that nude images of all the models are easily accessible on the internet. And the show did equally well with 10 to 12 and a half year old boys who are going to have their minds blown when they finally get around their parents' internet blockers. CBS executives are touting the broadcast as breakthrough programming for people who are excited by the tops of boobs. Producer Dave Mitchell told Variety, quote, The $2.5 million fantasy bra is a big draw with women who shop at Victoria's Secret and an even bigger draw with men who've never seen or heard about sex before. The runway show drew expected outrage from the Christian Family Research Council. Executive Director Kathy Rouse charged that the event degrades women by objectifying them, most likely because she's never seen a Ukrainian prostitute receive a bukkake shower from a gang of cracked-out Albanian teens. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. It's Free Talk Live. Launching into the second hour of the program. You can join us right here, toll free. 855-450-FREE is the number. That's 855-450-3733. Looks like some Bitcoin companies are teaming up with law enforcement to form what they call the Blockchain Alliance. Ian and Mark in the studio will tell you more about that. And then the group that is a forming maybe against the blockchain alliance which i hope to see that happen there's a call for it over at bitcoin.com so who will be victorious in this struggle for power in the cryptocurrency world well, i guess time will tell our toll-free number is 855-450 free aaron is on the line actually he's on via skype and uh were you in philly or uh, pennsylvania yep philadelphia all right aaron go ahead hey hey guys how are you doing welcome sir go ahead with your thoughts um I was, uh, Mark was mentioning that somebody should build a distributed uh, torrent system, and I wanted to bring to his attention both Maelstrom and MadeSafe, which are developing a system where instead of having, they want to decentralize the internet, basically. The whole internet, so, yeah. What, sir? The whole internet, yes. Yes, the whole internet. As opposed yeah, we, to just, say, uh, you know, the way that one can go about getting movies or torrenting uh, music or something like that. Right, which would completely like sidestep that whole situation, and you would everything that you would just as people seed torrents instead of seeding a file, they would just seed a bunch of anonymous data that's saved by whoever, and it would be a it would. When's that coming out? <laughs> I shouldn't say I shouldn't say for sure. Right now, it says it's an alpha, both of them. So they're they have their dev bundles out, and they're doing little alpha tests with uh, closed communities in a That's couple of locations. We've been talking about uh, MadeSafe. We've had their their representatives on this program, what, three years now, two years? At least a couple of years, I would say. Sometime. So it's definitely... It's a, it's a, it's a huge project. It's a big undertaking, no yeah. doubt about it. I mean, but uh, so is the idea behind MadeSafe to really host the entire internet on other people's computers? That seems like... A little hard to do. I mean, I, I mean, YouTube's probably got a lot of storage capacity, and I imagine that would be relatively difficult to distribute. So what it would have is redundancy. You would store your data into the cloud. You would allocate a certain portion of your computer space, yep. and then it has to have triplicate redundancy of everything. So about a third of what you allocate would be what you could save to it without having to pay additional money because then you're providing more resources than you're using on the system. Mm hmm and then nobody has the no one person has the whole thing but every time someone turns off their computer then the two copies that are left one of them will duplicate itself and put it somewhere else on the system i see so now, it always maintains that all right so but i mean in the early days this idea of distributed uh, internet content i mean 
one of the problems with things like Tor, for instance, is that, uh, or there's some other systems that are, I guess, not not really Tor, but there's another anonymity system out there where you're storing files. I think it's Freenet, actually. Freenet, you're storing files on other people's computers without them being aware that what is being stored, so who knows what's actually in those files. Uh, you know, in those systems, it's kind of slow to retrieve the uh, the data, I mean, if you want to watch a YouTube video in HD, you've got to have some pretty fast throughput, right? So, if you're uh, if you're if Made Safe is connecting to a thousand different locations to download something, in theory, it could come fast. But what if the the bits that you need aren't coming quickly enough? Uh, I guess those are technical problems that so they they can overcome somehow. It's actually built into the system that the more demand there is for a particular file, it'll propagate itself in the system like a virus. So I there. See. I see. They solve your little problem, pal. They're brilliant. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, yeah. I, I got to hand it to them. So instead of so instead of a DDoS attack shutting down a server, it would just cause that particular web page to become copied millions of times across the network. Huh. You'd, you'd want them to DDoS freetalklive.com. Exactly. DDoS cool. is uh, denial D distributed, distributed denial, denial of service, service attacks. attacks. Yes. Great, Aaron. Uh, thanks. And you said it was uh, okay. So it was made safe. And what was the other one you mentioned? A uh, maelstrom is being actually created by the BitTorrent group, and that's in alpha as well. And those will all be out next month. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully by the end of the year. <laughs> hey, thanks, Aaron, for the call yep. tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. And also, we're seeing new interesting developments in the world of uh, buying and selling as well. We've certainly talked about the Silk Road here on Free Talk Live, the idea of this underground uh, free marketplace or relatively free marketplace where people can sell things like drugs and fake IDs and other products uh, without asking any government permission first. But the problems that we've seen with the Silk Road is that they are centralized. There, there's Silk Road was on a server somewhere. I think it was Iceland, maybe. Uh, they, they, it was on a physical machine somewhere, and it could be tracked and it could be taken out, and it was. And some of these other underground websites have been. But it's going to be a real, yeah, real chain, game changer if uh, these things get uh, instituted. Right. And Open Bazaar is a decentralized marketplace where people can go and sell, again, whatever it is that they want to. Maybe they want to sell something innocuous like T-shirts. You can do that, too, uh, with Open Bazaar. And they, I believe, are actually in some sort of a public beta at this point. I, I haven't checked it in a while, but I remember I was able to download it a little while back, like maybe eight months ago or something like that. And so I presume it's uh, it's even further along. And we're actually going to have the head programmer for Open Bazaar on the upcoming Bitcoin panel, which is going to happen this Friday here at Keenvention. Wow, in that's Keen a big New deal. Hampshire. I didn't even know that, Ian. You didn't even know that, Mark? No. Wow. Well, there you go. You should pay attention to uh, the Keenvention announcements. I thought I mentioned it on the air at least once. We're also going to have Gavin Andreessen, the head programmer for Bitcoin. He's going to be there, which is a huge deal. Uh, and Chris Pacia is the the new head programmer at Open Bazaar. He's going to be on the Bitcoin panel. Our very own Derek J. Freeman is coming in from San Francisco uh, to sit on the Bitcoin panel. So I'm excited about that. Uh, of course, we've got Dr. Darren Tapp, who's the host of Neocash Radio. He's going to be heading up that panel. Matthew Ping will be on the panel as well. He's more like a, a realtor in the Manchester area who's who can talk about the you know the nuts and bolts of actually doing business with Bitcoin. And so it's uh, it's going to be a great panel. Uh, plus the the guy from Library L B R Y dot I O, uh, Jeremy is going to be there. Jeremy Kaufman, and he's actually a late addition to the Bitcoin panel. Right. And uh, Library is kind of a cool concept. I don't know if you've heard about that one yet, Mark. Um, I saw that you had posted it, but I didn't get a chance to really research it. No. Yeah. Well, so we were discussing Popcorn Time and how Popcorn Time has been uh, taken offline. Actually, we never really even got into the story. Uh, but the library is going to be a, again. It's sort of this distributed network uh, that we were we've been talking about that'll make it easy for uh, people to download and you know and seed movies and music and actually reward the creators of the movies and the music with uh, you know with Bitcoin essentially. My understanding that's my basic understanding of it. I haven't really taken a deep look into it. I'm looking forward to learning more on the Bitcoin panel, which will be happening this Friday at Keenvention. Now, you if you can't make it to Keenvention in person, you don't have to worry. We'll record the entire thing. But if you watch it on video, it's not the same as actually being there in person where after the panel is over, you can actually talk to the panelists. So that's obviously one of the benefits of being there in reality. Keenvention is $60 for the entire weekend. If you just want to come up for the Bitcoin panel, you pay the day rate, which is 30 bucks for the day. 
And uh, you can do that at the door. You can use credit card online right now at keenvention.info. Also, Sounds like it's worth it uh, just to see that that speech. It's well, it's not going to be a speech. It's going to be a panel, and it'll be uh, actually a 75-minute panel, so much longer than your typical panel at a lot of these uh, conventions. Mark, you and I, we go to the radio conventions, the Talkers Magazine uh, seminars in New York City, and their panels are like 50 minutes maximum or mm-hmm. 45 minutes. So this should give plenty of time for everybody to ask questions. Uh, it's going to be, I think, a really valuable panel with some super Bitcoin expert types on it. So we were discussing Popcorn Time, which is an app or a program. I'm not sure if it's available for for phones, but it probably is. It certainly is available for operating systems like Windows and Macintosh and Linux, which allows you to watch movies uh, basically almost in an instantaneous manner, like licensed movies, movies from companies that don't want you to be watching their movies for free. You can How find do those do it? on Popcorn Time. So Popcorn Time is using the BitTorrent uh, software behind the scenes. It's basically a pretty uh, version of BitTorrent. So instead of of finding a torrent online, downloading the torrent, waiting for the torrent to download, then watching whatever it is you've you've downloaded, the Popcorn Time thing allows you to search for the movie you want, click, and after it starts to buffer for a moment, it'll show you the movie. So it's a much more Netflix-like experience without having to pay for Netflix. And unfortunately, it's now been shut down. I see. Uh, but we'll tell you it? why. We'll tell you why it was shut down here. Uh, you can join us at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And then law enforcement teaming up with some of the big players in the Bitcoin world. That's not good news. Uh, we'll tell you about the Blockchain Alliance. And you can join us here and bring up anything. It's Free Talk Live. You can control your health care with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is like minded people coming together to share medical costs, which saves money. You don't even have to pay for procedures that violate your conscience. Because we all share the same values. Join the movement of people who share in medical costs and change the way you pay for your health care forever. Go to libertyhealthshare.org to find out more. Liberty Health Share. Together, we're changing health care for good. LibertyHealthShare.org. There comes a time when you need custom embroidered or screen printed apparel for your business, organization, or a special event. Corporate Casuals has been helping people create great looking logoed apparel for over 25 years. They can produce a single piece or thousands using name brand apparel like Nike, Patagonia, Adidas, and Hanes. Create your logo in their online embroidery design studio or upload your existing logo and they'll turn it into embroidery. Go to corporatecasuals.com slash FTL and include FTL in the order notes and save 5% on your order. My name is Bill Bonner, and I'm the president of the largest private news and research network in the world. And I paid for this airtime because I have an important message to the American people. There's a change coming that the government isn't telling you about. This change has deep implications for life in America, from where you shop to the doctors you visit and the family you want to protect. Look, I've made predictions like this before. Thing is, I was right then, too. A few years ago, I warned that housing prices would collapse. They did. Before that, I warned that dot-com companies would crash. They did. Those who listened had a chance to save themselves. But this has nothing to do with the stock market. This will affect us all. You can watch the video for free right now by going to disappearingwealth.com. Again, that's disappearingwealth.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you may join us right here toll-free. Our number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've kind of got a tech theme here tonight. Uh, we have discussed the lawsuit against the NSA, which has been dismissed. Uh, so you've got to protect yourself. You can't expect the uh, companies to protect you. You've got to take steps like getting ProXPN to protect yourself. Uh, ProXPN.com slash AMP to get a real special deal on ProXPN for Bitcoin users. And also, if you've got Bitcoin, you want to save big time on Amazon, just go to saveitpurse.com. That's saveatpurse.com. And you can start saving. If you've got Bitcoin, you can start saving tonight. If you don't yet have Bitcoin, then you'll have to acquire some of that. But you can go to saveatpurse.com and get started there. Learn more about how it works. It's super simple to do. In fact, you can regularly save 20%. That's the average in the United States. I have never saved less than uh, 20%. I think maybe my first time I had to do 15% uh, just to get past like a certain, like you have to do a, a certain number of transactions. I think it's one or two below 20%, and then they'll unlock you, and then you can go all the way up to 50% off. Uh, ever since I've been unlocked, I've never gotten less than 20%. It's been awesome. And I've gotten as high as 40% off. Mark, you've gotten as high as 45%. Yeah. Off. Anything you can basically plan ahead for, it's great because yeah. you can get a huge discount. Right. If you it. don't and need it now, exactly. Amazon has everything you need in life, basically. Um, and so you can plan ahead for a lot of things. Right, so go to save at purse.com, save at purse.com, and get started there. Start saving big time. Why not? You got nothing to lose. It works. I've done it more than two dozen times over the last 10 or 11 months, and I'm super happy, a super happy customer here. Popcorn time. Is its wild ride coming to an end? Asks TheVerge.com, one of the two biggest versions of the illegal streaming service. PopcornTime.io was reportedly shut down for good last week. And not because of the government, necessarily. It was a dispute between the developers hmm. that shut it down. The website itself is now unavailable. The app no longer works. And the official Twitter account announced last Friday in what described as its pro probably its last message that users should instead download Butter, which is a legal version of the app. Which, why anyone would do that, I'm not really sure. I mean, the point of popcorn time is to watch movies that you haven't paid for. So why the legal version would be an acceptable alternative, I don't understand. See a bunch of movies no one would want to watch. Yeah. Earlier, all the, all the, uh, the, the unlicensed movies or uh, movies that uh, copyright has expired for some reason. Earlier last week, a number of PopcornTime.io's core developers left the project, fearing the proposed inclusion of a paid anonymizing VPN service would lead to legal trouble. Many people involved in the project have held the belief that because the app doesn't make any money, that it's legal. Intellectual property lawyers would likely disagree, <laughs> according to a report from t right. I mean, if you go out there and you uh, post the latest uh, album from uh, Kelly Clarkson or whoever, and then people download thousands of copies of it, if you say, well, I didn't charge for it, that's not going to get you out of the copyright violation. Mm, probably not. Uh, but you know, one thing they don't do anymore that they did used to do was is they would go after 
people for downloading stuff and then have these huge judgments uh, against them. So, you know, you do they download- not do that anymore? Or are we just I, not hearing about it? I haven't heard of a single case and I've heard that they've stopped doing it. Okay. That'd be good. Because it's really bad press for them. Like when they went after the grandmother because her kid downloaded some right. uh, stuff on his computer. It, on there's her been internet connection. Lots of incidences like that, and none of those people, um, you know, it doesn't really matter whether they grandparents or not. Uh, what matters? It looks is, bad though when it's yeah, grandma. They're going after somebody for say downloading thirty songs, and they're suing them for sixty thousand right. dollars, and it's ridiculous. According to a report from Torrent Freak, the remaining developers of Popcorn Time did try to keep the service running after their colleagues left, but they were unable to take control of the original domain name, uh, and that's a problem. This is one of the issues that lots of businesses encounter this. You know, one person generally has access to the domain name. And if the business sort of has an issue, there's a discrepancy between the partners or the board of directors. And the one guy who's got the access to the domain name says, see ya. And he takes his access with him. Your website's gone. But isn't there, um, can't they, I've heard they've forked uh, popcorn time. Well, right. So the most popular fork of Popcorn Time is the one that is now shut down. PopcornTime.io was the the Popcorn Time, the most popular of them. There are others. Now, the fork is what, Mark? Can you explain that for our listeners? No, I can't. Okay, good. Uh, So the fork is... I can read things on the internet. (laughs) The fork... Specifically in our chat room. uh, It's not something you eat with in this case. The fork is a different version of the original software. So you've got Popcorn Time. Someone originally created this thing, Popcorn Time. Yeah. And then they, it's open source, so they release it to the world. And then you come along, Mark, if you knew programming and you wanted to do something different with Popcorn Time. Let's say you didn't like the way they laid it out. You wanted to do a different layout that was snazzier or whatever. So you would then download the source code, and then you'd go in there and you'd create a fork of the software, meaning that it's based on the original software, but the code has now gone off in a different direction. Uh, And so then you would release that, and then other people could then fork off of yours. So I don't know how many different forks there are of popcorn time, Uh, but they do here reference one of them, and I'll uh, tell you why you probably shouldn't use that one, or at least some are saying you shouldn't use it. Uh, In the last few days, someone has been trapped tampering with our infrastructure, mainly our DNS service, and we can't convince our provider that we are us and that we want to stay online, reads a message on the cached version of popcorntime.io, which is their site. Since then, a developer for the app identified as Wally told Torrent Freak they have shut down the site servers completely. He said, there's nothing I can do anymore. I deleted any logs that could be harmful for any other developer. So is this the end of Popcorn Time? Well, yes and no. PopcornTime.io was the most popular version of the app, endorsed by the streaming service's original creators, who left the service in March of last year. But other forks remain, including Time and the number four Popcorn, Time for Popcorn, which is hosted at Popcorn-Time.se. However, while the I.O. version was generally thought to be safe to use, the .se fork has been frequently accused of hosting adware and viruses that infect users' computers. And this is part of the reason why downloading things like music and movies from sort of the black market, if you will, uh, the underground, is a dangerous activity sometimes, right? So, oh, look, here's this program, Popcorn Time. You can go to this website, download it, and then you'll get to watch all kinds of movies for free. Who doesn't want to do that? Yeah, why would you want to pay for Netflix? Well, the cost is something you might not see. The cost. I'll tell you why you want to pay for Netflix uh, or Amazon Prime or something like that because it's so easy to use. Yeah. I don't. I've never used Popcorn Time. I have no clue, but I can tell you, I can watch a movie on my big screen TV through an app on my PlayStation Three, yeah. this old console thing. Um, you know, use a remote and you know have and the works. same old television experience that I enjoy having. For uh, in the case of Prime, I think it's less than eight dollars a month. I was hmm. paying, I don't know, God knows what, for cable 10 years ago, 40 or $50 a month That would be the cheap tier yeah. of cable. And Most people are laying out 70 to 100 plus. Right. My mother's over at uh, over $100 a month for her whatever viewing experience that she's got to have. I don't even go over it with her because it just frustrates me. So you might save the 10 bucks a month on Netflix, but what you're actually paying here is you don't know what you're paying. If you've got adware and viruses that have been infected into your computer because you've downloaded this this other version of it's popcorn darn expensive. Time, then that's a huge problem. 
and that's not worth it. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us here, and this is Free Talk Live. We'll see if there's an update from the cop blockers here in moments. KDArmor.com is your one-stop shop for the most affordable body armor period with packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order. Why would you go anywhere else? KD offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level 4. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free water purification kit for a limited time with any body armor package. Go to KDArmor.com. That's C-A-T-I-Armor.com. Come and take it. It's time to kick some ash because cigarettes have met their match. Smokers are switching to Vapriot e-liquid by La Cig because when you kick ash, you kick tar and smelly smoke too. La Cig smokes the competition with real people customer service, a seven-day satisfaction guarantee, and same-day fast free shipping. Become a vapor today at LaCig.com, spelled L-E-C-I-G.com. La Cig e-cigarettes, kick some ash. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm It's Free Talk Live. Of course, you can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian, 
And Mark? We've got gear. T-shirts are available online at gear.freetalklive.com. You can get your pre-order in before October 31st to be part of the initial run of shirts. There are a couple of different designs available to you. One with the Free Talk Live logo. Much more than a couple. There's uh, all kinds. Well, there's designs and then different types of shirts, too. Okay, but there's only two designs, right? Uh, last I saw, unless others yeah. have been added. Two, des two, uh, two designs, several different types of shirts. There's the uh, FTL logo shirt, and then another one with the FTL logo on the back, and the words taxes are theft in the Free Talk Live font across the front. It's a bold t-shirt. Yep, you can go and get yours. Pre-order them over at gear.freetalklive.com, and if there's enough of a pre-order, we can maintain the great prices and incentivize more styles and options in the future. By the way, there are ladies' cut shirts, uh, so don't worry about that, ladies. Gear.freetalklive.com. Go take a look for yourself. Our friends Damo Freeman, Brian Sumner from the Cop Block Mac Tour, the mobile accountability for cops tour, are in Noblesville, Indiana, where the warrants for their arrest have been issued regarding, ch allegedly regarding chalking the police station. They've armed up with more chalk. They are, I believe, en route to the police station, or maybe they're going to go straight to the jail. I'm not clear on which place is their destination. As we learn more about what happens, if it happens during our live hours here tonight, we will bring that to you. I'm keeping an eye on the, the relevant places on Facebook, so I'll, uh, I'll let you know that when it occurs. And the idea is they're going to turn themselves in on these warrants and then just see what happens next. See uh, how long they have to sit in jail because they're not going to bail out, which is, of course, what they expect you to do. They expect you to pay thousands of dollars or whatever the arbitrary amount is that has been set uh, for you as bail because you don't want to be in jail. Most people don't want to be behind bars nope. for any period of time. And so they are sweating it out. They're calling all their family members. They're trying their best to, you know, get out of there. Well, Adamo and Brian are just going to go sit and we'll see what happens. It'll be an educational experience at the very least uh, for them and for the rest of us who are not inside the jail cell and watching uh, comfortably, relatively comfortably. Yeah, this is the kind outside. of educational experience I prefer. So uh, we'll inform you of that as time goes on here. We were discussing uh, the Popcorn Time takedown, although uh, it's been taken down by their own developers. There was a developer disagreement, which resulted in uh, basically the site no longer working anymore. And there are other popcorn times out there. This is a piece of software that you could use to watch movies with, and I believe TV series uh, were also on popcorn times. You watch movies and TV shows uh, without going through the official channels, which means you weren't paying money into the uh, sort of the old system. Of course, as I think it's worth pointing out, if you don't support with your dollars the movies that you watch, then you shouldn't be surprised when they don't make any sequels and they don't make any more movies like the ones you like. So it is important to ultimately put some of your money behind the things that you enjoy, although uh, the people who are in favor of so-called piracy, you could call it file sharing if you prefer, uh, the people who are in favor of file sharing would argue that you should be able to watch these movies for free because if it's a good movie or if it's a bad movie, then it's it's not good to pay money for something you didn't enjoy, right? Like if you've paid $15, which is generally what you'll pay as much, you know, 10 to $15, depending on the matinee or whatever, to go to the movie theater and to watch something uh, for the first time. What if it's a bomb? What if it's junk? What if the acting was terrible? The uh, the directing was subpar? You didn't enjoy the, the experience? Well, how many people will actually go and ask for their money back? And how many theaters will actually give it to you? Yeah, well, I you don't have any clue whether they'll give you your money back or not. You, you didn't like the movie? Well, we don't guarantee you're going to like the movies that you see. There's lots of bad movies out there. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the uh, the file sharing systems of the world allow people to sample a movie before they actually go and watch it. And, you know, I imagine that Star Wars, for instance, is going to be highly pirated, just as many every movie essentially is. They all have pirate versions out there, but yet they're still able to easily, cro many of them are able to cross the, the blockbuster $100 million threshold, some of them within two weekends of being released. So the argument that uh, file sharing has had some sort of deleterious effect on the movie business, I don't think it really holds water. And I'm sure the, the movie industry is really excited that popcorn time is going down, but it's certainly not the end of file sharing. Uh, torrents are going to live on without popcorn time. Yeah, I don't know. Um, like the the philosophical arguments, I hear. I, I can, I can make arguments on either side. The question is, what are we going to do about it? And it seems like you're going. The, the these industries are going to change. They have to change because this is what the public is demanding. Whether we like it or not, no matter what you how you feel about it, 
It's going to change. And, uh, you know, anybody who tries to stand in the way of progress, as it were, they're, they're always going to be disappointed. So you can share your thoughts here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, speaking of standing in the way of progress, Mark, unfortunately there are people in the Bitcoin universe, Bitcoin being an amazing decentralized currency, since we've been kind of talking about a lot of things decentralized here tonight. Uh, Bitcoin <laughs> is decentralized money. It's money created by people on the Internet. It is being used internationally in a, a lot of different places. Lots of companies are accepting it, as large as Dell Computer and as small as a mom-and-pop business, maybe right there on your main street. We have that here in Keene. There are multiple businesses in Keene, New Hampshire, that accept Bitcoin, which I love, and hopefully we'll see more of them popping up over time. Uh, but unfortunately, some of these companies, the Bitcoin exchanges, are maybe not helping things. By being so compliant and so obedient. In fact, more than just compliant and obedient, but jumping to when asked to by the government to do whatever they're asked to do, even if it's not something they legally have to do, like forming a blockchain alliance. Here's a story from Coindesk.com, where a group of digital currency companies and organizations, as well as a number of U.S. law enforcement agencies, are establishing a new public-private forum in a bid to foster communication and education between the government and industry stakeholders. Dubbed the Blockchain Alliance, the initiative is being spearheaded by Coin Center and the Chamber of Digital Commerce, with support from a range of companies, including Bitfury, Bitfinex, BitGo, Bitstamp, Blockchain, Coinbase, and they go on and on and on with this list. But these are some of the big players. Blockchain. Blockchain, yeah. Coinbase. We, we, these are some of the big names. I mean, I have a blockchain wallet. I have a Coinbase account. And, you know, I'm not happy about this news, but I'm also not really surprised either. Coinbase has always been notoriously uh, compliant with the government. So this just takes it to a new level. The alliance will also draw support from several Bitcoin developers and the MIT Digital Currency Initiative's Brian Ford, government agencies. And departments are already taking part, including the U.S. Justice Department, the FBI, Secret Service, Department of Homeland Security, the U.S. Marshal Service, and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. More agencies, including international government agencies, are expected to join in the months ahead. The former U.S. Deputy Assistant Attorney General has been named to the board of Bitfury, and he will act as the group's first director. His name is Jason Weinstein. Both Coin Center Executive Director Jeffrey Brito and Weinstein suggested one of the primary goals of the initiative is to help change the perception that Bitcoin and digital currencies are, quote, a currency for criminals, unquote. Yeah, they don't like that. And I can understand that, right? Like, you don't want someone, when you're pitching Bitcoin to them, to immediately think of, oh, this is that thing you can buy drugs with. I mean, yeah. that could be a bad PR Or gamble thing. with or a variety of things. Right. I mean, doesn't bother me. Personally, that's a perk for Bitcoin. But uh, I can understand why people marketing the uh, the concept would feel a little wary of that one. Look, uh, th there seem to be two camps in this uh, in the Bitcoin sphere when it comes to, you know, working with the government or not working with the government. The compliance camp and the, yeah, uh, the, the freedom camp. camp. And I can see why you're on one side. I am on both sides. Why? Because... You're not going to ever control other people's behavior, right? Right. I mean, that's kind of the idea of being a libertarian is, is that other people get to do what they want. That's right. Bitcoin is a completely agnostic uh, uh, set of software. It doesn't care whether you comply with the government's rules or don't comply with the government rules. government's rules. So unlike, say, PayPal or MasterCard or Visa, Bitcoin doesn't care. It's like cash, Cash doesn't care whether you're buying drugs with it or whether you're buying baby formula. It's just a tool. And people are going to use the tool in however, whatever fashion they want to use the tool. I say, let them, please, just use the tool. Yeah, well, at the same time, I think it should. these companies should get some feedback from the market, letting them know that we're not happy about it. 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. This is Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. 
currency is too important a thing to be left in the hands of government bureaucrats, especially when billions of dollars can be created with the swipe of a pen. Overstock.com supports the cryptocurrency movement because it returns the power of an inflation-proof money to the people where it belongs. Did you know that you can use Bitcoin to pay for anything Overstock.com sells while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more? If you support freedom in the cryptocurrency movement, you should support Overstock.com. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists, get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow, a new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. So you've got to take a state construction license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Silvia rated an A-plus by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Halloween Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Chalking has begun in Noblesville, Indiana. We have been wondering when the boys from Cop Block, the Cop Block Mac Tour, Mobile Accountability for Cops, copblock.org slash Mac is where you can go to learn more about that. We've been wondering when they were going to show up at the Noblesville, Indiana Police Department and turn themselves in for a couple of warrants that were issued for their arrest. We had a demo Freeman on the phone with us Saturday night announcing that they would be going there today. Now, these are warrants for supposedly, from what best we can tell, these are warrants for writing on the sidewalk with chalk. Yep. Now, this, this is an activity, uh, drawing on the sidewalk with chalk in some cases. This is an activity, of course, that uh, you know young people would be able to get away with with no problem you at mean all. mean children. Children, yeah. yeah. These guys are pretty with. young. Okay, well, it depends yeah. on your definition of young. Gotcha. Yeah. 
what were you going to say? So they could get away with it. Well, well, they can do that. It's encouraged. Um, Whereas sort of writing these things in the hopes of holding police accountable appears to be not so encouraged. Yeah. Well, they're right. The big question is- I don't think the law can really recognize it that way. Like an activity that's okay, that's legal for one class of people should be legal for all of them, it seems. Right. And, you know, the big question is, if you went down there and were chucking pro-police messages like, I love cops, yep. cops keep us safe, protect and serve. We support the Nobisville PD. Yeah. What would they do then? They'd probably thank you for it rather than arrest you for it. And so they have been had these uh, these warrants have been issued presumably for the chalking incident that mm-hmm. happened several weeks ago. They were arrested in Kansas a couple of weeks ago on said warrants. And obviously, you know, when you find out there's a warrant for your arrest, you better deal with it or else, you know, if you get life's going to be really uncomfortable. Yeah, you get out of one jail, you go to another uh, state, you'll get arrested for uh, for the warrant there, too, if they find you. So they have decided to go ahead and handle this by going and turning themselves in. And then uh, the plan is to sit in jail and see how long they keep them there and see what they do next. The chalking has begun. They have shown up at the police department. And uh, Brian Sumner, uh, Damo Freeman are the two guys here that are the warrants have been issued for. They're on the scene. Uh, they are there with some supporters, from what I understand, who are, are also, I don't know if they're also chalking with them. There's apparently a video feed, but it's only on cell 411 right now. And later, I imagine that will be available uh, to everyone. Cell 411 is, of course, the uh, super useful activist app that allows you to send out notices to your friends and your family members to let them know that you're in trouble. And so they've actually sent an alert on cell 411, and they're using cell 411 to send video out. So there are a few people who are in their network who are able to see this happening live. And I have one of them uh, sending me the details on what he's seeing as he's watching the video. Uh, so they're chalking. Here's some of the things they're chalking in front of the police department. No damage, free speech, no victim, no crime, free a demo, free Brian, no damage was done, and a bunch of dollar signs. So <laughs> we'll see how long it takes the Noblesville Police Department to realize that this is going on outside of their department and send the officers out, presumably to effect the arrest for the warrants. It does make point. you wonder why, um, you know, and this is the obvious, the obvious resolve of these activists, why the police would want them back. Right, yeah. like they were well out of their state, well out of their county, of right. uh, Noblesville, well out of their municipality, but they brought them back, yep. and so they brought back the chalking. Now you've done it. So we'll uh, let you know as that develops. Jesse's on the line in New Jersey. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Jesse. Hey guys, hey. Uh, just wanted to share something off topic here with you, real quick. The, sure. Um, I, I, I travel around for work. Um, right now I'm in New Jersey, but I'm actually from uh, the Harrisburg area in Pennsylvania, but. Um, uh, I heard you guys talking a couple weeks ago about unions, and uh, I've got a really great uh, union piece here. I, uh, the job we're doing, um, we're, we're kind of we hire contractors to put in our sortation systems. What kind and, of um, systems? Sortation systems for like uh, distribution centers and stuff. Okay. And um, well, anyway, we we uh, we got working for this company who um, was actually trying to leave the New Jersey area. Okay, because of course the taxes and all that. Yeah. So New Jersey, uh, the New Jersey state came back and said, "Well, we don't want you to leave because you know that would suck for us as far as you know the whole tax thing. So um, we're going to grease your pockets a little bit." So they bought them this whole new building, okay, and then paid for all this equipment. This comes from the state of New Jersey. Well, all that the company, which will uh, remain nameless, the company then had to uh, just pay for the labor. Well. since some of the funding was coming from the state of New Jersey. The company had to hire people based on the prevailing wage, meaning we had people there who were literally turning a wrench for seventy dollars an hour. Woo! Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Like we, my company, we were—I'm um, not sure how exactly that whole thing worked. We were a contractor of a contractor, but uh, we weren't involved in that. Um, and I personally would have had a hard time taking that myself. <laughs> But um, the people that we hired, we had to hire people at that rate. Not mm-hmm. only that, but 60% of the workforce that, that my company hired and everybody else on the job site had to be minority. Mm-hmm. Meaning if you had more than 40% of your workforce was a white male, then you got fined. It didn't matter what anybody's qualifications were. If it was more than 40%, you got fined. And there were actually bureaucrats who that's their entire job they come to the site he was there once a week and count 
<laughs> and count it. This, <laughs> it like the we're the stuff. diversity police. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that it. I, I heard that when I first got on site uh, about a month and a half ago, and I just that's crazy. So well, wow. you guys, uh, I heard your your show, and unfortunately, I listen to your show on a podcast. I don't get to get it live, so um, I, I'm about two weeks behind. I listen to you while I'm driving around, but uh, yeah, that's an amazing <laughs> story. So basically, the company was going to leave. New Jersey says, "Hey, look, we'll cut you a deal. We'll pay for the the uh, the product. You pay for the labor and upgrade your systems for you." But they didn't realize that it would come along with all the regular strings attached of doing uh, government work. Well, the company is also getting you know they're getting tax breaks for like the next decade. So, mm. but they're coming out way ahead. So they and are like okay. The government, yeah, the government bought the building too for them. Like we're talking millions, tens of millions of dollars worth of. Uh, uh, equipment and, and facilities and stuff. That wow. They just kind of, well, whatever. You know, it's taxpayer paying for it. No big deal. Incredible. <laughs> and we uh, have a good friend of the show that we've uh, gone and visited in the past. It has done a great, he's an architect and uh, had done a great deal of work in New York City with the um, uh, unions and uh, it seems like uh, there are a lot of people who are sort of that work with unions that are non-union that have a lot of problems with unions. I don't particularly have a problem with uh, organization, you know, people, employees getting together and Maybe having their little clubs or whatever it is that they want to do. It's when the law gets involved that I have a, a problem. But in this case, he was saying that, yeah, you know, they would have, uh, you know, the, the pipe fitters union uh, would you know, just refuse to touch, say, a certain box that's lying in the middle of the floor or something. So they'd have to get somebody else from some other union. It, like, it was just this big thing about how much work I'm not going to do. It seemed to be what these employees were all about. And for me... Having, you know, I've been an employee a great deal, and if and as uh, somebody who might employ people, my concern would be, you know what, I want somebody, I want somebody who's going to solve problems, not somebody who's going to make problems. Yeah. And it just, the stories I hear, story after story after story in dealing with the government um, and unions and things like this, it just sounds like a bunch of employees that make problems. Who wants them? You hire p employees to solve problems. Yeah, the problem in this situation is they had to be hired this way. Sure, right. sure. You know I mean? Which is why they hire get somebody else. Yeah, right. Well, because it's mandated. That's why they get to act the way they do. You know, they yeah. uh, they're protected. Hey, Jesse, great story, man. Thanks for sharing that with us tonight. I appreciate right, hearing appreciate from you. you. Sortation systems. That that was a new one for me too, Mark. I've heard uh, that term before. Yeah, it's apparently a thing. You know, all the uh, the warehouses have sortation systems. They help uh, people sort things. Somebody has to basically. sort the things in this world. I imagine Amazon has a awesome sortation system in their warehouse. As I well. imagine that uh, most of the sorting is done in uh, up and uh, emerging economies by people. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. That's what happens when you demand higher wages and bigger benefits. You get all, sortation you know, Time and time and time. Yeah, well, you know, robots do your yeah. job. Yeah, it's true. Thankfully, they can't do our job yet, Mark. That'll Not yet. Be, they're they're, they're making someday. art. <laughs> wait, wait. when you say that, you mean like the Google uh, picture thingy that they, they have where I, it like interprets photos in some sort of All I know is, is that the claim is, is that... Um, you know, that computers are making art, that they're, you know, they're trying to figure out how to make computers more, I don't know, human. And one of the ways to do that is to have them create art. So you can join us here. You can bring up whatever's on your mind. We'll give you the latest on the Cop Lock Mac Tour as they are still out front. Apparently no police yet. What happens if you try to turn yourself in for a warrant and they won't arrest you? I, I you can sleep on the stoop. Has this ever occurred before? I mean, how long do they have to sit out there? How it's much a great chalking? Question. How many chalk messages are they going to be able to write before these cops actually take them in on the warrants they've issued? Mini, mini, apparently. <laughs> we'll keep your, uh, we'll keep our eyes on this uh, situation as it develops here. The blockchain alliance, certain Bitcoin businesses teaming up with law enforcement. There's a pushback. Some say. We don't need the blockchain alliance. We need an anti-blockchain alliance or an anti-bankster group instead. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. 
We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. You can control your health care with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is like minded people coming together to share medical costs, which saves money. You don't even have to pay for procedures that violate your conscience. Because we all share the same values. Join the movement of people who share in medical costs and change the way you pay for your health care forever. Go to libertyhealthshare.org to find out more. Liberty Health Share. Together, we're changing health care for good. LibertyHealthShare.org. This is your Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Monday, gold is up $3 at $1,168 per ounce, and silver is up $0.10 at $15.97 per ounce. Bitcoin is currently trading at $284 U.S. dollars. Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, founded in 1977. When you're serious about precious metals, give us a call at 800-874-9760 or visit us online at rrbi.co. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kane and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, October 26, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.95 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,166 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $285. Antiwar.com reports in weekend moves they said were intended as a message to the Palestinian Authority, the U.S. House of Representatives voted to temporarily freeze $450 million in aid to them and also fined them $80 million for recent criticism of the Israeli government. Officials said that the aid was established under the Oslo Accords on condition that the Palestinian Authority use it to fight terrorism and said recent violence in the occupied territories made the U.S. doubt that they were sincere about the pursuit of peace with the Israelis. Representative Ed Royce from California said about one-third of the Palestinian Authority's budget comes from foreign aid and that this means donors have considerable leverage. He suggested other nations could follow the U.S. example and cut aid as well. This seems unlikely, however, as many of the other donors, particularly in Europe and the Middle East, are harshly critical of Israel's crackdown on the Palestinians and probably aren't going to be looking to take out the Palestinians. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently remove the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports, the United Auto Workers informed General Motors it will terminate its contract at 11.59 p.m. Sunday, effectively setting a deadline for the first auto worker strike in eight years. The move is seen as a strategic tactic to keep General Motors and the UAW on task in the talks for a new four-year contract. If a strike does happen, it would be the first in the auto industry since 2007. The Detroit-based company said it was working with the UAW to address the issues and remain committed to obtaining an agreement that is good for employees and the business. Any deal hammered out would cover GM's 51,000 union members for GM, similar to one reached with Fiat Chrysler last week. Union members at Fiat Chrysler turned down the first tentative agreement, forcing officials back to the negotiating table for a second deal that provides significant pay increases over the next four years. 
Are you an advocate for free market money? Do you promote Bitcoin as an alternative in a fiat-centric world? Then you need Spendabit in your arsenal, the search engine for things you can buy with Bitcoin. Spendabit aggregates millions of products from thousands of Bitcoin-enabled merchants. Keep your money in the free economy. Visit Spendabit.co today. Bitcoin merchants, ask about our merchant suite to reach even more customers. Spendabit.co Reuters reports torrential rainstorms battered Louisiana on Sunday, leaving thousands without power after pounding southeastern Texas as the remnants of Hurricane Patricia converged with a second storm. The heaviest band of rain moved over the Gulf of Mexico, triggering coastal flooding warnings and flash flood watches in southwest Louisiana and soaking New Orleans, according to the National Weather Service. More than 20,000 people were without power in the greater New Orleans area. Rainfall had totaled as much as 7 inches since late Late Saturday night and forecasters predicted another five inches could fall. The National Weather Service said water spouts over lakes and tornadoes over land were both possible into the early morning hours. National Weather Service forecaster Gavin Phillips said most of the heavier rain to the west of New Orleans will taper off in the evening and for far eastern Louisiana it will probably end closer to midnight. The National Weather Service also issued a tornado watch for southeastern Louisiana and coastal Mississippi into early Monday and warned that severe thunderstorms could develop in the region. Tides along the southern coast of Louisiana were expected to be a few feet above normal at high tide due to sustained winds. More than nine inches of rain swelled rivers and flooded roads around Houston, but no injuries or deaths were reported as flash flood warnings ended. Petroleum refineries around the Gulf Coast, which make up more than 40% of U.S. capacity, also appeared to be largely undamaged. In the Eagle Ford and Permian Basin oil fields of south and west Texas, no major production cuts were reported, while the rains were heavy in Houston, they came after a month-long dry spell, so flooding was relatively limited. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Congressman Hanford, you're married, two beautiful children, and yet you texted nude photographs to a 23-year-old staffer. Why did you do it? I wanted her to see my penis. I was hoping the penis photo would arouse her sexually, uh, that she might think, that's a nice penis. I will respond with an offer to have sex with the penis or maybe send a photo of my breasts. I would like that. And that's what I was hoping would happen. Here's what intrigues so many people. Why would a promising, successful politician take such a big risk? I knew I could let down my family, destroy my marriage, and damage the country that I love. But on the other hand, if there's even the small chance of getting off at any time, you got to take it. The big question, do you plan to resign? No, I'm very good at my job. Plus, it's a lot harder to get women to have sex with you when you're not a congressman. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live. You may join us here if you'd like. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. The Skype username is lrn.fm. And I'm getting updates about our friends from the Cop Block Mac Tour. We are kind of their, their main radio outlet to get the news out about the Mac Tour. You can go to copblock.org slash Mac. And uh, it's a demo Freeman and Brian Sumner. They've been touring around, going to different cities, meeting up with cop blockers. Of course, cop block is a organization. I hadn't mentioned this before. It's an organization dedicated to holding the police accountable and encouraging you to hold the police accountable by one of the most powerful ways, recording video of what the police are doing. And right now, video is being recorded of the police in Noblesville, Indiana, who have come out of the police station at this point. It took them 20 minutes to respond to Ademo and Brian outside with liquid chalk, writing all manner of... Uh, so they're out there with liquid chalk, the same thing that they got in trouble with for before? That's correct. They went back to Walmart. They made a video. I don't know if you remember this. Ademo told us on Saturday night they did make a video where they tested the liquid chalk because ah. the police had claimed that the liquid chalk they'd used had left some sort of staining or that they, the police actually called it paint. Right. Uh, and so, you know, that sounded pretty bad. So I guess a demo took the time to actually do a test video and, you know, see Sounds how hard reasonable. it was supposedly to remove this liquid chalk. 
Uh, they've been chalking things out in front of the police station tonight. They have their warrants out for their arrest from the first chalking incident. They've now come back to Noblesville, Indiana, due to these warrants, and they've resumed chalking in front of the police station in Noblesville, wondering when they were going to actually get arrested. Uh, chalking things like no victim, no crime, free Adamo, free Brian, no damage was done. And just after the cell 411 lost the audio and video, apparently it came back and they were under arrest. Just moments after we, we had, were speculating about how long it would take Suspicious. them uh, to be arrested, they were arrested. The videographer quoted that it only took them 20 minutes. Quote, oink like a piggy. I don't know if that's what the videographer said or if that was another chalking. And the videographer explained cell 411 to the cop. That, uh, See, now this is supposed to be about accountability for police. And when you, you know, fall into the, it's very easy to pick, you know, pick sides and everything. But when you fall into the, hey, oink like a piggy thing, um, yeah, you know, it just doesn't look good. Yeah, I don't come at it from that perspective when I'm out there doing cop block. Uh, but it's. It's not uncommon for people to be upset with the police. They're frustrated and to, uh, to say things that are rude and and you know uncalled for. But I can understand why they're frustrated. I mean, the police yeah. have, have done many police have done some really horrible things to some innocent, peaceful people, and it's it's not fair to collectivize them all together. I mean, not all activists are the same. One activist who does something violent and stupid doesn't mean that all activists are violent and or stupid. And so it is important to treat police as individuals. This is one of the lessons I've learned having moved to uh, to Keene, New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, but we are talking about people who are not in New Hampshire and who are dealing with departments that may be more dangerous and more violent on average than others. I don't know about Noblesville, Indiana, but nonetheless, the uh, videographer explained cell 411 to the cop. Uh, the cop says, I saw your videos, and then further, the cop admits that we have to wash it off, and that causes us more work. So this is really about the cops actually having to do some work besides, you know, paperwork and sitting around the office waiting for the next uh, teenager uh, to get arrested for having an underage container of alcohol or something. Well, um, I, I, I'd be frustrated if I had to do extra work, too. But I guess the question I have here is, is that, remember, this is about um, equal treatment under the law. So if young people who, you know, children were out there... Uh, chalking pictures of you know dogs cats and sunshines and peace symbols and whatever yep. they were doing they probably would would they have to would they be upset and because they had to go out and clean it or would they would just leave it um if people were out there chalking you know adults were out there chalking pro police messages like thanks for saving our cat in the tree or a variety mm -hmm. of other things they might say would they have to go out and clean that off or they, would they just leave it so in this case maybe they feel motivated to go clean it off but that's something that you feel motivated to do, not work that someone's created for you, unless you'd be right. you'd you'd be arresting the kids or the um, pro cop people. They could just wait till it rains, and then the job would be done for them. Uh, a few more notes here from the scene: cops are taking crime scene photos after the arrest. Four units are on scene to respond. Demo yells, "See you later." And uh, Brian is objecting to riding with a canine unit with the dog in the back cage. The cop actually agreed to putting him in into an alternate vehicle. And they are now putting the chalk in the evidence bags. Adamo and Brian are now in the transport to the jail. And uh, officer says, quote, I'm not going to play your games, man. Videographer questioned, invokes the Fifth Amendment. Officer says, are you responsible for any chalking or is it just the other two gentlemen? They want to arrest him, too, right. apparently. Uh, I don't have to answer your questions. This isn't a game. You're going to lock people in jail. I love how they call it a game. One of the other uh, chalking says legalized chalk. The cops are smiling and laughing about the incident and seven to nine sure, cops Sure, because they look at it as a game. Yeah. Seven to nine of the cops uh, responded from the department. So we'll continue to update you as that develops. We uh, Ademo knows the back line to the studio here, the landline, and uh, he has been invited to I use I hope he doesn't it. use his one phone call for us. No, that probably wouldn't be a good idea, but maybe he will. Uh, <laughs> I guess he's just going he's just in, sitting right? in the jail cell, so you know you might as well call Free Talk Live if you've got. I suppose that situation. Doug is in Illinois and listening via the TuneIn app. Doug, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Yeah, before I get to the point that I wanted to make, um, I heard you talk about underage drinking. Yeah. And uh, they actually have a medical board that I actually have been uh, reading about online. It had it, been all over the net today. Um, they're recommending that the, el uh, that the tobacco age be 21. It be met with the alcohol age, pretty much like they do in New York. 
My opinion on it. Who is okay. is this a federal thing that they're proposing? It, yeah, well, not not a federal thing, but it can be what they're recommending. I don't know if you know it or not. New York already did that. In New York, That's you right. have to be 21 now to get to get tobacco. My thing on it can be that okay, if you have to be 21 to drink, you have to be 21 to get tobacco. Then you need to be 21 in order to make the call on whether or not you want to join the military. I mean, yeah, if sure. you're not old enough to have, if you're not old enough to make the call on drinking and 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 doing tobacco, you're not old enough to make the call on if you should join the military and put your life on the line and go over there to the meat grinder of Iraq or a, a, another war. Absolutely. And you're not old enough to make the call on shooting people. You know, I mean, that would totally I, kill I, the I, military's I, recruiting, though, right? Because I mean, there it's easy to prey on young eighteen-year-olds who don't really know what they want to do with their lives in a lot of cases at that point. But you in might many know, cases, they've made the military is a good career choice for these folks. But that doesn't change the fact that for the ones that die or the ones that commit suicide um and remember there's 22 a day uh you know it's a pretty terrible career choice well it's not a good career choice if you actually want to have a career beyond the military a lot of the stuff yeah. they train you for in the military is useless uh in the free market or the semi-free market once you get out so you've spent yeah. all these years you're and- not much of a producer if you're working for the government generally yeah that's uh, that's a great point right. tonight doug anything else you want to share go for it yeah, well, that can link into my original uh, thought that I called about. Sure. Um, actually, tomorrow, Barack Obama approved a warship to go over. Evidently, the Philippine government and the Republic of China are having an issue over an island. Yep. They're debating on who it should belong to. Tomorrow, we're actually having a warship, an American uh, warship, go over there. And we're going to evidently maybe try to provoke them. You know, that can be a type of thing where you have it, you have it lead to war. You know what I mean? Why are we even involved in it over there? We should not even be over there. Here, here. Well, I, I, I for one, am not involved, yep. but uh, the federal government apparently is involved. Now, do you know which side they're going to take? Are they going to be challenging, uh, rattling the saber at China? Yes. Yeah, they're right. They're with the Philippine government. Um, Got it. But here can be what, what, what people like me are continually talking about. Why do we get involved in crap that we should not be in? You know For islands I mean? that are if of Barack, no if, real use if, at all. <laughs> right. But, but if Barack Obama would like to go over there, fine. Let Michelle Obama and their family go over there and fight the war. Let them go over there and pick up a, a gun and join the infantry and go over there and fight the war. I'm tired of feeling like people like me are a pawn in a game. You know what I mean? Mm. We go over or, if it, if the draft were brought back, people like me, regular everyday people, would have to go over there and fight the war. Over no, you wouldn't. One. You could just say you no. Had... You could well, just refuse, yeah, and then they'll put you in a prison cell. Right. Yeah, well, I'm, well I'd, I'd like, rather be in a prison cell. I'd rather see Barack Obama and Xi Jinping or whatever uh, fighting it out with uh, long knives and small That'd shields in, a, in an arena fight. Let's That'd take be much bets. better than a bunch of uh, military people blowing each other up. Doug, good call, man. Thanks for your thoughts tonight. I appreciate it. You can join us. It's that easy. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can bring up whatever's on your mind on Free Talk Live. I was coming out of the hardware store when I saw him. An old man, late 70s, hunched over in the freezing rain, no hat on his head, limping across that slippery parking lot and pushing a row of shopping carts toward the cart corral. It's heartbreaking. Millions of hardworking Americans simply don't have enough money to retire, so they just keep working and working and working until it's too late. Hi, I'm Chad Stubbs, president and CEO of Power Trader, and I believe that's just plain wrong. That's why I'm now distributing to the public absolutely free copies of Power Trader's game changing book on how regular folks can make the money they need to retire fast. For your free copy, Call 1-800-771-6706. Don't let the lack of money rob you of your retirement. Call now for details and get your free copy of this book before it's too late. 1-800-771-6706. But hurry while supplies last. 1-800-771-6706. 1-800-771-6706. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years in serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light 
system today, complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231, and the Berkey Guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey Guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey Guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653. Or order online at GoBerkey.com. That's GoBerkey.com today. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Join us right here, toll free, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype in here at Skype username LRN.FM. And how would you like to get some business cards, 500 of them, for $9.99? You can do it. It's a really good deal. By using code FTL at Vistaprint.com. You've heard of Vistaprint.com. They've been around for quite a long time, and they've got all kinds of great products for small business owners and your home office as well. Business cards, postcards, flyers, banners, apparel, invitations, whatever you need with your logo on it, your contact information, these guys can help you. You know, 500 business cards for ten nine ninety nine 99 is a really great deal, but I, I'd have to design it first, and there's a lot of money involved in that. No, nah, you don't really have to do that at all. They're, uh, they've got a super easy-to-use system on their website, which allows you to customize text, colors, backsides, and more. You can upload your logo to one of their existing designs, and also, if you want to, you can upload your own custom design if you feel like going through that level of effort. But uh, it's a super easy tool to use. I've used it. You can go and give it a try yourself for just $9.99 for 500 custom business cards over at Vistaprint.com. Create and design your own, and it's up to a 50% savings over regular site pricing. The quality is there, and they're easy to customize. So get started over at Vistaprint.com. And again, it's 500 custom business cards for $9.99. Now, of course, you can upgrade to fancy stuff like brilliant finish, like metallic spot gloss or raised print. It's super easy to do. Go ahead and get started at vistaprint.com with code FTL at checkout. So our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Our friends Adamo Freeman and Brian Sumner from the Cop Block Tour are currently in custody the police are on the scene trying to figure out how to clean up the chalk that has been left behind. They were talking about apparently calling in the fire department, uh, and the video will be available later. I presume it will be posted to copblock.org or copblock.org slash Mac 
when it is there. So uh, in the meantime, we will go back to the story about the Bitcoin or the so-called blockchain alliance where me uh, mega Bitcoin companies like Coinbase and blockchain uh, and a bunch of others are going to be teaming up with law enforcement, which is a very ugly thing for them to do. They do intend to, uh, what they claim here, will change the perception that Bitcoin and digital currencies are a currency for criminals. Now, to do this, the Alliance will maintain a mailing list through which law enforcement officials can ask questions, host regular conference calls, and potentially produce larger gatherings that bring industry members and government officials together. I don't see a problem. The oh, I think it was a huge problem in teaming up with law enforcement. Jeffrey Brito uh, is one of their executives... He says, quote, essentially, it's a public-private forum that's going to make it easier to have a single point of contact with law enforcement for people in the Bitcoin industry, academia, developers to have conversations about law enforcement on the Bitcoin blockchain to ask questions and to answer questions. As far as I'm concerned, Mark, keeping the uh, law enforcement in the dark about Bit Bitcoin is a good thing. I mean, the more they know, the more people they can arrest. Well, um, law enforcement didn't have any trouble uh, in the Dread Pirate Roberts case uh, getting involved and stealing all kinds of bitcoins. Yeah, that's true. So they, um, you know, they they can learn quick enough. I, I think that if some people want to do this, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, create some kind of conduit through which Free Talk Live can talk to law enforcement and law enforcement can talk to Free Talk Live. I wouldn't be interested in doing that. But if people want to do it, then that's fine. It's not going to change Bitcoin. Bitcoin's uh, still the same powerful uh, quasi-private um, currency that it always was. Weinstein cited the companies involved as the main impetus behind the initiative's formation and direction forward, which to me is even more disturbing. He said, quote, the most critical thing here is this is being driven by the industry. This wasn't law enforcement coming to us and saying, help us. This was the industry going to law enforcement and saying, let us help you, unquote. Yeah. That's disturbing to me. I mean, this is this is worse than obedience. This is they're begging to improve law enforcement's ability to enforce the law on Bitcoin users. And yeah, Bitcoin is being used for illegal drugs and things, you know, fake it's IDs. It's being used for all kinds of things. To be purchased. U.S. dollars are being used for buying drugs and fake IDs and everything that Bitcoin's being used. It's Bitcoin's no more evil than the U.S. Yep. dollar. Uh, so I, you know, I have I have serious issues with the sort of the, por the purpose of this organization. Weinstein, uh, Weinstein went on to stress the alliance's function isn't to help law enforcement conduct investigations into the industry. Rather, he characterized it as a forum for quote high level conversations unquote that focus on the broader trends of the technology and how it's being used in the world today. In a statement, Chamber of Digital Commerce President Perry Ann Boring, we've had her on the show. Uh, said the initiative will help spark discussion between the industry and law enforcement. She said, quote, it's no secret that Bitcoin has perception issues, which is a roadblock to mainstream adoption. Having an open dialogue with See, law what's enforcement. what's the problem with uh, increasing, you know, having better perception? But they're only marketing towards the uh, the bureaucrats. If you want people to perceive Bitcoin differently, you should market towards average people. Not the law enforcement. Cops aren't the ones out. Whether cops understand Bitcoin or not is not going to in, uh, it's not going to increase Bitcoin's adoption rate at all. Uh, policymakers, she says, will help uh, reduce anxiety about the transformative technology. She said. Well, luckily, not everybody's on board with this blockchain alliance thing. There's a great website, Bitcoin.com, which is run by liberty-minded people. I don't know if we can say who the the operator of the site Let's is. Let's just say liberty-minded people. But some liber, liberty-minded folks are behind Bitcoin.com, and there's a story there that is responding to this Bitcoin alliance or the blockchain alliance. Jamie Redman writing for Bitcoin.com's news wing against the Bitcoin alliance. We need an anti-bankster group instead. And Bitcoin has brought about a fervent energy of people looking for financial freedom. After the collapse of 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto gave us something to use against the global level of corruption we see every day. Satoshi, of course, is the creator of Bitcoin. No one knows who it is. Satoshi is a pseudonym. It's not the person's real name. Maybe right. it's not even a person. Maybe there's more than one person who is Satoshi Nakamoto. We don't know. Uh, when the crash occurred, no banker that colluded for profit was jailed. In actuality, they all got paid. In May of this year, they got bailed out, in Sure fact. did. 
In May of this year, five of the biggest global banks agreed to pay penalties for transgressions of manipulating trading, money laundering, and misguided mortgages. And over the past two decades, those banksters have robbed billions upon billions off the people. Yet no banker or trader was arrested, and no one cleaned the tainted fiat. However, when it comes to Bitcoin, the blockchain alliance feels they need to clean up the currency's past. Do you remember the January of 2009 Times headline, Chancellor on the Brink of Second Bailout for Banks? Well, the blockchain sure does, and so do quite a few other people. The level of corruption involved with today's banking system is so tainted and misguided that people must ask, why are the companies forming this alliance not dedicating their energies to the real criminal behavior? Over the course of the last two years, banks have only had to pay minuscule amounts of fines compared to the mountains of wealth that they've swindled from our economy. When Agreed. you when you get charged with uh, money laundering, you go to prison. Oh, yeah. You, the little guy out there, any one of us listening would go to prison for being charged with money laundering. But the banks, they just pay a, pay a fine that probably amounts to a fraction of the interest that they collected in one day. And then they're off the hook uh, for that. So uh, you can join us here and share your thoughts on banks and Bitcoin or whatever happens to be on your mind. You may take control of the airwaves here. 855-450-FREE. And if we get a chance, we'll tell you about a New York man who is building his own sovereign nation in Utah. We'll tell you what it's <laughs> called and uh, what he's up to. You can join us here. This is Free Talk Live. So you've got to take a state construction license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today. KDArmor.com is your one-stop shop for the most affordable body armor period. With packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order. Why would you go anywhere else? KD offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level 4. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free water purification kit for a limited time with any body armor package. Go to KDArmor.com. That's C-A-T-I-Armor.com. Come and take it. Anyone can publish on the internet, but not everyone is publishing material suited for online reading. According to the Yahoo Style Guide, it cautions that internet content has a few seconds, three or less, to encourage people to read more, to take action, or navigate to another one of your pages. So make it easy for readers to pick and choose. Isn't that the way you poke around online? Use short words, short sentences, short paragraphs, bulleted lists, and short pages. Front load what you write, putting the most important information at the beginning of headlines and paragraphs and sentences. Same goes for your keywords. What someone would likely type into the search box on Yahoo or Google. For more tips on communicating better online or in a job interview or everyday life, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at Bitcoin.com. That's Bitcoin.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. 
Free Talk Live. The idea that politicians are leaders. Check your premises on that one. Cutting proof. Really? (laughs) Would you really follow Barack Obama or George Bush? Would you really follow their every command? Would you follow their suggestions? Do you believe that politicians are somehow more knowledgeable than you are? That politicians are of a special group of people? They're a special little critter that uh, for some reason is uh, more enlightened or educated? Constantly you can hear talking heads refer to the authorities or our leaders in Washington, and it's just its just patently absurd. I mean, these people are failures at life. That's why they became politicians. Right. Uh, I mean, you know, there's so many of them are attorneys. Uh, <laughs> the good attorneys make, make a money. whole bunch of money and retire with yachts. Uh, the, the unsuccessful ones go into politics. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Join us here toll free, 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And if you've got some Bitcoin and you want to share some with us, then you can go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com. Bitcoin.freetalklive.com. That'll take you to our brand new website, which was redesigned just a couple of weeks ago. I'm really happy that we finally got that out to you. It's been a long time coming. Uh, But the Bitcoin page is still there where you can uh, send off as much or as little Bitcoin as you like to us. We appreciate it. It's the Bitcoin tip jar. And also you can send us Bitcoin in the form of your altcoins. In the Bitcoin universe, there are a bunch of what are called alternatives to Bitcoin, altcoins for shorts, that are competing in a marketplace to try to one-up Bitcoin, to try to do it better. So far, none of them have succeeded, but there are hundreds of them who've uh, been trying, and a few dozen of those hundreds you can actually send to us through shapeshift.io. And you can do that through the Bitcoin tip jar page at bitcoin.freetalklive.com. Now, over at bitcoin.com, uh, the one of their article writers, Jamie Redman, is on the attack against the Bitcoin Alliance and specifically the banking cartel He is not happy about them, Uh, and he's going out saying that we don't need a Bitcoin alliance or a blockchain alliance, which is this new group that we had discussed earlier. The blockchain alliance is a bunch of obedient Bitcoin exchanges that is now teaming up with law enforcement, and apparently they approached law enforcement. Law enforcement didn't approach them saying, hey, we want to know more and talk to you more about Bitcoin. No, they went to law enforcement and said, hey, we want to help you guys. Well, when you help law enforcement, you usually help them go after peaceful people, especially in the world of Bitcoin. I mean, as far as the crimes that are being committed, and again, I don't consider it a crime if there's no victim, but the law, the cops do. Law enforcement considers selling and buying drugs to be a crime. As as far as the crimes being uh, committed in the Bitcoin world, it's mostly not anything violent, right? I mean, we're talking about money being transferred here. Yes, there is a site out there on tour called the Assassination Marketplace, but there's no evidence that anyone has ever been assassinated through the assassination marketplace. So it's just a website. There's no proof that anything's happening with that. There's no proof that the Bitcoin that's being spent in there is being paid out to anyone for actually committing any kind of Well, what uh, if there hit. was? Um, if there was, then that would be one crime that was actually committed with Bitcoin, right? right. That well, would that be would be um, one you, of them. You'd look at how many, how many assassinations have been done with U.S. dollars? I don't know. A lot this of them, is, I guess. This is the thing that I keep on uh, wanting to go back to: is is that Bitcoin's agnostic. It's just a tool. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to Bitcoin whether or not you will cooperate with the police. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's you know I don't think that the Bitcoin Alliance is going to do anything particularly to make themselves more legitimate and law enforcement eyes. They're just going to be a tool to go after the bad people that use Bitcoin. So if you want to share your thoughts, you can do that. You can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So to come to law enforcement and say, hey, we want to help you, well, that's ultimately only going to help them investigate people like Ross Ulbricht. Ross Ulbricht, the creator of the Silk Road, the Silk Road being an underground website that was taken down by the FBI about two years ago, where people were able to buy and sell almost anything they wanted to. Drugs were the most common thing bought and sold on the Silk Road. 
I don't want those people to be helped. I don't want the law enfor- law enforcers to be helped to take down more Ross Ulbrichts and more uh, underground websites. So I find this to be dangerous. And uh, over at Bitcoin.com in their news segment, uh, in their news site, Jamie Redman is on the attack against the bankers in general. He says an alliance should be started to take on the banks. He said it should be started to create a meaningful dialogue about the real global crooks in this world. Hopefully the blockchain will be the tool to eradicate these fallible humans who keep scamming the public with inflationary spirals, booms and busts, and fractional reserve banking. What's fractional reserve banking anyway? Well, fractional reserve banking is when a bank uh, chooses to keep less than the money that has been uh, deposited in it in um, in you know on on site. They and they all do it. it. Yeah, they all do it. So they'll um, instead of taking your money and loaning it out to a business, they take your money and loan out nine times that to a business by creating it. By into creating reality. it, it's completely legal. Um, the the government sanctions this behavior. I find it to be, that's fraudulent in my opinion, pretending, you know, if I go out loaning money I don't have um, and, you know, it's sooner or later somebody's going to call it counterfeiting or something. I don't even know how to describe this in the, in the real world, what the, what the comparison is when it's, you know, the government doesn't sanction it. But um, well, is it fraudulent? I mean, you're getting the money, right? Like the money is, uh, is being paid into whatever it is you're loaning it to, or they're, they're loaning it into existence and it's going to the car loan or the, uh, they're the, involved the in a fraudulent, loan. um, activity because the federal reserve sanctions this, they, pr- they print the money into existence or something. Yeah. So, well, I mean, there's fraud behind the entire, I mean, the whole dollar itself is, sure. is fraudulent if you will, but I mean, I guess as far as as far as the customer getting what they're applying for, they are getting what they're applying for. So there's no fraud there. I mean, you're saying the fraud is very, very deep, basically. Yeah, I guess um, it's it's really difficult to describe it when a da- when a bank takes in a hundred dollars and lends out nine hundred dollars. There's something wrong with that picture. Absolutely. Now, it would be one thing if they took in $100 and lent out $100, but um, in many cases, they don't even have the, the proper relationship with the, the, the depositor in that case because a depositor believes they can come back and get their money any time, but they can't if there's a, sort of a run on the bank. Right. A depositor should, in my man- mind, make sort of a certificate of deposit and say, look, I'm contracting to give you this much money for a year or two years or whatever the term is, and then at the end of that, I will get my money back. And that's a much better system to my mind because at least everybody's above board with what's going on. Bitcoin has been sent to us from the vision of Satoshi Nakamoto and has brought forth a system of accounting that cannot be tampered with. An aligned group of people promoting the use of a distributed ledger technology should remember that their bankster buddies may never understand this potential. However, this banking cartel surely remembers that they know how to cook the books and tamper with the wealth of society. So when he talks about the distributed ledger technology, that's basically what Bitcoin is. So Bitcoin is a distributed ledger, meaning that the ledger, which is normally where you would write down transactions for a business, right? Uh, the ledger is available all around the globe. It is hosted on thousands of computers around the world. And so you can't change the ledger on one place and fool anybody, right? You, you'd have to, if somebody were to change one of those ledgers, one of the copies of the Bitcoin blockchain, then all of the other copies out there would realize that something's wrong with that one copy and it would be rejected. Just that fast. So there's no way to defraud this system. The checks against fraud are impervious in Bitcoin. If it could happen, it would have happened already and Bitcoin would have failed. But Bitcoin is rock solid. The coding is amazing. And that's why Bitcoin right now today is close to 300 US dollars per Bitcoin. It was getting close to 295, I think, yesterday. I think it's getting down to like 280 or whatever, but... It's incredibly valuable. And the reason why it's so valuable is because it works. Depends on the exchange. It was up over 300 yesterday. Was um, it? Okay. Depends, depending on the exchange. Bitcoin's protocol shows a solid system that has brought fewer fees to the people than the enormous amounts of, we- amounts of wealth and the monopolized money transmitters charge. It's well known that people are unhappy with the banking industry and want change throughout the system. Many protested in the streets during the Occupy movement, but that led to pepper spray and beatings that never fixed the situation. From day one, an alliance formed from the cryptocurrency community against these actions and has started to show signs of weakening the bankers' defenses. It's known the banks have committed so much fraud they've tainted the dollar 
the euro and every other sovereign currency with their crime sprees. In fact, they have put a black cloud over the entire mortgage industry with their rampant abuse. Now, it seems like he's conflating the banks with the government uh, here. I'd I mean, say that they're <laughs> they're certainly working in close collusion. Yeah, I mean, he's the, the Federal Reserve Bank is a private institution, but they're also they're also inherently connected to the federal government. Like they've got a special deal with the the Federal Reserve Bank. The that basically, president, uh, you know, the president names the, uh, the, the, chairman. the chairman of the Federal Reserve. Right. And the Federal Reserve is the buyer of last resort for the U.S. Treasuries when the U.S. government's trying to sell these things on the market and they can't get a buyer. They just go to the Federal Reserve and the Pre Federal Reserve prints the money and buys the treasuries. So I understand it. You can share your thoughts if you want to correct us here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The remaining moments of Free Talk Live are coming up. The new fourth edition of Healing Our World, The Compassion of Libertarianism, will take your understanding of liberty to a deeper level and has over 1,300 updated references, new cartoons, and a forward by Dr. Ron Paul. With discounts for multiple book purchases, the fourth edition of Healing Our World is a great gift for the liberals, pragmatists, environmentalists, and Christians in your life who think libertarianism is cold-hearted. Get yours today at healing.freetalklive.com and use promo code FTL for a $5 discount. You can control your health care with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is like-minded people coming together to share medical costs, which saves money. You don't even have to pay for procedures that violate your conscience. Because we all share the same values. Join the movement of people who share in medical costs and change the way you pay for your health care forever. Go to libertyhealthshare.org to find out more. Liberty Health Share. Together, we're changing health care for good. libertyhealthshare.org. There are hundreds of silver products on the market today, but there's nothing like the astonishing health benefits of the multi-patented One Silver Solution. Boost your immune system at a great price with our Silver Solution Liquid, starting at $12.95 a bottle, now available in regular and extra strength. That's half the price of the leading competitors. Call 844-USE-SILVER for your free catalog or go to OneSilverSolution.com. OneSilverSolution.com. There is only one Silver Solution. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you're going to explain? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is... You ain't going to make it. Wait, no. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the wind working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. 
This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. That's right, it's Free Talk Live, and you can join us toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Even in these remaining moments, enough time for you and with you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. What about that guy who's building his own sovereign nation? We'll tell you about it and what's it going to be called, uh, what it is going to be called here in moments. Dave is first up, though, in California. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hey, Dave. Dave in California. Going once. Dave. Yeah. There you are. Go ahead, sir. You're on the radio. Can you hear me? Yes. Go for it. Okay. Well, I was very happy to hear you guys touch down. The topic of Occupy, I think it was a very significant time a few years ago. It was the people making a real attempt at free speech. We are going to park ourselves down here on your lawn and stay here until you listen to us. But we got an example of how the bureaucracy can drive you out by motorcycle or horseback or whatever to get you where your free speech is not going to be heard. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, they um they they actually arrested people for being in the park too long in some cases. Uh, there was a, there seemed to be a, an incredible campaign out there talking about how their um, the occupiers are a bunch of bums and that that sort of thing. Really, it just seemed to be some people that wanted some responsiveness from their government. Yes, indeed. I don't think we were at any close to all being in agreement as to what that would constitute, but it was certainly people saying. We're not happy with a government that's strictly in the business of exploiting the people to their own benefit. And we saw a lot of that. And we felt, I felt, for one, that how they get in office is a critical concern. Electronic voting and gerrymandering and every deception they can to make sure that only the people that they want to have voting, can vote, and their vote can be flipped by the thousands if they're not the way they want them. So Now, you're out in California. Do they have the electronic voting out there? Different kind. We do fill out a piece of paper. We do slip it into the machine, mm-hmm. but then it's brought down to the registrar's office and counted by a deep old counting machine. Right. And we have hundreds of people there, attorneys and everybody, watching, but nobody knows what's going on inside the computers and so that's true yeah so there could be some kind of backdoor some kind of programming that is uh scheduled to you know for every vote for candidate a count another or for every three votes for candidate a count an extra vote for candidate a or something like that i don't know how they would do it but they've got their ways hey thanks dave for sharing your call and your thoughts with us tonight Salt Lake City, the Associated Press reporting New York man is building his own sovereign nation called Zakistan on a remote piece of land in Utah. The story coming out uh, today on, uh, let's see, the AP, Zach Landsberg, Zach with a Z-A-Q is how it's spelled. Zach has created a yellow and red flag, an official looking passport, okay, and a border patrol gate guarded by a giant robot sentry. <laughs> According to KSL TV, the conceptual goal, he said, and uh, he is the president of uh, Zakistan, he said the conceptual goal is I want it to become a real country. I mean, that goal's not going to happen. It's impossible. But going through the motions, I'm trying to make that happen. He's even created a motto for the land of Zakistan, something from nothing. Zakistan works the best, I think. When it's wedged up against the real world and when the passports circulate, he told KSL. When he bought the sagebrush-covered stretch of Utah backcountry a decade ago, the city-dwelling Landsberg was amazed at how removed it was. It's about 60 miles from the nearest town and 15 miles away from a paved road. Jeez. While, he call, yeah. While he calls the area harsh and desolate, it's also appealing. He said, quote, out here, it's not that crazy of an idea to have your own little spot. And to do your own thing and have your own space. That's pro- what they tell you. Um, if you say that you want to have uh, personal freedom and that sort of thing, they tell you, well, go go start your own country. Mm-hmm. 
I suspect they won't let Zach do that, even though there's been a, basically no improvements at all to this land. I suspect there's some group of people calling themselves the county who are going to want to have some kind of a property tax bill come yep. from Mr. Lansbury. They're not going to provide you with uh, gas. They're not going to provide you with water or uh, natural gas nope. services or trash pickup. They'll or, send you a bill, though. A road or anything, but you still got to pay. Now, now, I don't imagine he pays much, though. It's probably pretty cheap. It, I mean, uh, my guess would be it's probably in the tens of dollars. Maybe. Uh, maybe even less. He's hesitant to reveal the exact location of Zakistan for fear that people will get lost trying to find it. While he knows the four-acre piece of land is equipped with a supply bunker and won't actually become its own record. So where's the robot? Uh, it's at the gate, apparently. I'm not I'm sure. supposed to believe this? I'm not sure at what point. Uh, he's not going to tell us where it is, but I'm supposed to believe there is a robot guarding it. Yeah, I don't know, Mark. I don't know if the AP was taken out there or not. It's not made clear. Yeah, we're being lied to. He knows the four-acre piece of land equipped with a supply bunker won't actually become its own recognized country. He said building it, though, is an artistic exploration in how far he can push the concept of land ownership and sovereignty. He says, my goal is to, like, probe these little areas to try and find what that does mean. So I think that on one hand, uh, I think he's coming at it from the from a good perspective of let's see what we can do. But on the other hand, of also admitting that he's not going to be a success, I think he's selling himself short here. And it, it is important to yeah. be realistic. But at the same time, if on one hand you want to be a sovereign country, you have to act like you're a sovereign country and not disclaim yourself uh, every moment you talk about it by saying, but I know I can't really do that. You know, one of the things about, I, I get where he's coming from, though. It seems likely that he, he won't be successful. That's probably true. But w why? I think that's why what he, really people need to ask themselves. Why won't he be successful? Is, why won't he be successful? Well, because men with guns will eventually show up and— You uh, mean other govern governments uh, yeah. Other governments will refuse to recognize his governorship? That's right. They will say that, you know, this guy who owns this land isn't free and that he doesn't own that land for real because, you know, the county of whatever, the state, the state of Utah, the United States government, and probably the U.N. or whatever all claim to own that land in some kind of superior fashion to him. Yes, you may be the sole taxpayer for the land— you may keep other one other of the tax cattle off the land, but it's really our land ultimately. Mm -hmm. If we want to take it from you for some reason, we will. Yeah, they'll prove that it's their land if right. they have to. And this is, you, I mean, if he can't become another government because a government says he can't be a government. Well, how did the government get to be the government in the first place? Sadly, it was violence. Killing people, yeah. really, is ultimately, there's very few governments that are in place today ruling over land they're ruling over that weren't willing to murder to get to it. Which I don't, I hope he doesn't do that. I hope he doesn't take that route. I think that uh, violence Who's is he not gonna the murder? solution. murder? Well, somebody's going to try to come and collect a property tax, and, and he he's going to pay, pay it. it. All right, and he is. He is but paying remember, property taxes. But remember, other nations, nations oftentimes paid tributes to other nations. And that's actually order... what he calls it. He, uh, according, according to the story here, he pays property taxes to Box Elder County, which is about 160 miles north of Salt Lake City, although he does refer to those payments as tributes. And he wants to make his little nation look legitimate. The passports look and feel real. And visitors like his friend Mike Abu can get them stamped as they enter and exit the country. Abu, I wonder if the robot stamps the passport too. Abu said, quote, legitimacy is one of those things that's fairly subjective to begin with. But when we're talking about it, does it exist? There's no question about it, he says. Well, does the land exist? Yes. <laughs> well, I think he's asking, does legitimacy exist? Legitimacy, I suppose. I don't even know what that means. Does legitimacy exist? It's sort of an agreement. Yeah, it is. And I don't, you know, it exists in people's minds. Right. And I don't even know how to describe it. But if if you're going, if you're talking about sort of modern nation states, there should be a path for nations to become nations. So we we know of, we've heard about Liberland in the news, mm -hmm. and Liberland's this uh, nation that doesn't that has a piece of land that is not claimed by any nation. It's called Terra Nullius. It is claimed by no one. So they you another nation can't claim. Hey, that's our land. They right. can't do that. It's very different from this story. But nobody's rushing to recognize Liberland. In fact, um, Croatia has uh, not been stopped from essentially what is a, a, a violent foreign invasion of this country from stopping people from passing from Serbia into Liberland. They have no say over somebody passing from Serbia into Liberland. But, but they've arrested them anyway. They arrest them for... Crossing from one country into, uh, you know, Terra Nullius and not crossing into Croatia. 
It's absolutely ridiculous. Well, it sounds like they do have some say. <laughs> They're making some say about that. Right. Well, it just goes to show the lawlessness. But, you know, you don't see the United States government um, sending a little, hey, just a little message to Croatia would all it take. You don't have to send anybody with guns or anything like that. Hey, stop it. And they would. Right away. Well, the U.S. government has no interest in protecting Liberland. That's because the U.S. government doesn't want competition. Nations, right. nations are, by their very nature, they are monopolies. And monopolies hate competition. This is why you can't create your own nation. Because, well, people who like mon- monopolists want monopolies. So you can join us tomorrow night online. In the meantime, over at freetalklive.com, check out our brand new website. Support the show as a Free Talk Live amplifier, and you can do that over at amp.freetalklive.com, A-M-P, amp.freetalklive.com. Here's an urgent alert from the Student Loan Hotline. The average student loan debt is $25,000. Have you been out of college for 10 or more years and you're still making your student loan payments? If you are struggling with paying off your student loan, if you are past due, we can help. Nationwide Student Loan Relief can now restructure your student loans. We can get your student loans out of default, stop any wage garnishments, stop harassing collection calls, and even eliminate your student loan payment. If you can't afford your student loans or if you're past due and you need help, you must call right now. We will restructure your loan or your money back and that's a guarantee. So call the Student Loan Hotline right now. 800-291-2865 800-291-2865 800-291-2865 800-291-2865 New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Understanding your credit score is the first step towards managing and improving it. This is Charlie Sundstrom with your Van Dyke Mortgage Minute. The most influential component of your credit score is your payment history. Almost equally as important is the amount you owe on credit accounts. Also impacting your score, but to a lesser degree, are the length of time you've utilized your credit the number of new accounts, credit inquiries, and your various types of credit accounts. To help achieve or maintain a healthy credit score, have a system set up to assure your bills are always paid on time. Don't max out your cards. It's better to have a high credit limit with a low balance. Never close old accounts. The age of these can actually help your